vond gisteren met Nina heel hard om uit te werken. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome for day two of the live broadcast um, today. We are um, ready uh, in the studio, or at least starting up in the studio, and we know that already two sites are close to getting ready. And I did get a message from um, India, so I think they are very close to uh, starting, and I think we will be switching to them uh, in just a few minutes. So Cor, uh, welcome back. Uh, I don't think the audience knows you travel uh, a couple of hours to get, to get here and to get back every day, uh, but to join us um, in the broadcast. Uh, what, what was your overall impression yesterday? Well, yesterday was a nice day and what we have to, as a message for the audience, uh, attending yesterday is that Myrtle Hall has completed her surgery finally and that she has found a mass of tissue which was not a dermoid kist it has been sent out for histological examination and so she will find out what is the involved pathology and she has a mind to publish that as a case report since it is unusual and possibly the MRI uh, uh, investigation has misled her to say that MRI. it was an um, MRI, yeah. that it was an um, cholesteatoma. Yeah. 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 The patient is all well, and uh, so it has a happy end too. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think that's the, that's the sign of professionalism that uh, you do need to take your time and to do uh, need to. Um, well, at, at least take the time uh, for the surgery and the, always have put the patient uh, in the first place, uh, the result of the surgery. Uh, shall we have a check to see if India, because I can see that India is ready for the presentation, but I have not heard any sound yet. So let's see. Uh, hello, Mohan uh, from uh, Chennai in India. Can you hear us, Mohan? I'm not sure if they're ready yet. Uh, maybe not. India, good morning. No, uh, we can see that we are, we are transmitting a sound, but they're not uh, live. Oh yeah, there you go. Hello, Mohan, can you hear us? Good morning. Uh, good morning for us anyway. We don't have your audio yet. We don't hear any audio. We don't have audio. We'll be back with you in a few seconds. Uh, let me check. We're just starting up. And I see you're preparing your patient. We'll be with you in a minute. But please try to see if you can uh, optimize your audio because we don't get audio in from you at the moment. We do see your presentation. And I need to check that it's not on our side, but I don't think it's our side. Please check your microphone uh, in India. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, uh, that is an interesting, uh, an interesting day to, uh, yesterday. Today will be uh, quite quite a difficult day as well, because uh, uh, also in the studio it's going to be quite hot. But uh, we of course need to emphasize that this all would not be possible without uh, our uh, the gentle support of our uh, sponsors, and I might, we may as well. Uh, put their video on for a mo short moment, because we're actually early, because we're supposed to start in 30 minutes. Otoplan is a revolutionary tablet-based otological planning software. Quickly and easily import DICOM files from PACs or USB drives. Intuitive controls makes it easy to master Otoplan's advanced features. 
Odo Plan's guided workflow simplifies 3D modeling and surgical planning. easily create 3D reconstructions of otological structures, including facial nerve, corda tympani, and more. Otoplan lets you see exactly where you are going before you make the first cut. Otoplan makes it easy to achieve an ideal view of the cochlea and make consistent measurements. One, two. Choose the ideal electrode array for each patient for best hearing outcomes. The electrode visualization tool uses patient-specific data to show insertion depth and covered frequency of each electrode contact. Autoplan makes it easy to discuss the ideal electrode choice and surgical considerations with your patients. one-step export feature automatically generates a full case report in PDF or PowerPoint format. Autoplan's post-op analysis feature makes it simple to perform a quality check and verify insertion status from post-operative images. Good morning, Mohan. Can you hear us? Can you nod your Can you nod your head if you can hear us? Hello, Mohan. Hello, India. Good morning. We have uh, no connection with the audio yet, which is uh, what happens at times. Yes. Um, they are, they seem to be almost ready, uh, but without the audio, uh, communication is going to be difficult. So no audio, we do see Mohan ready, waiting for us. And we're working on the, uh, on the audio connection from India. Los pasos más sencillos que tiene el modelo actual con respecto al anterior es número uno que es menos profundo menos menos eh, entra menos dentro de la cavidad craneal con lo cual eh, hay que fresar menos y en segundo lugar que es algo por lo que llevo luchando desde hace siete años que tiene tornillos autorroscantes y autoperforantes tornillos que se ponen en segundos en, en 10 15 segundos está puesto cada tornillo so we did now the first surgery and the first surgery 
uh, time was about 15 minutes from the incision to the skin to the closure to the skin. And this reflects, I think, the yeah. easiness of the surgery itself and also the safety of the surgery. So you don't have to deal with the dura, you don't have to do with the sinus. To my knowledge, this implant at the moment is the best implant on the world. Right after a surgery now, the first impressions are great. Um, it's it's uh, fantastic to see uh, how uh, the company uh, uses the hints and, and the feedback of the surgeons to improve the implant. And so this is uh, like a, a symbiotic activity between uh, the developer and the ENT surgeon and uh, that's fantastic. We will certainly have many patients with this, because it is easy to implant it, because there are more patients in this direction that come for this implant. In Frage kommen und deswegen sind wir jetzt auch sehr glücklich, auch im Sinne von unseren Patienten, dass wir da einfach ein größeres Angebot haben bzw. eine größere Indikationsbreite. I just finished the first implantation of the new Bonebridge 602 and I'm really excited. Uh, all the work we put in the new design all together um, makes a great benefit and a great step ahead for that implant and uh, I'm looking really forward to tomorrow. Uh, three more implantations and I'm really happy and uh, really excited about it. Since Graham's encounter with a seashell and a blade of grass in the 1970s and the inspiring discovery that brought the first multi-channel cochlear implant the cochlear story has evolved from an ambitious endeavour to a life-changing partner on the journey back to hearing. Our people are driven by this same dedication today and have helped transform hundreds of thousands of lives. This shared drive to do life-changing work is inspired and influenced strongly by our beginnings while being motivated by the energy of our people today and everyone we partner with and always guided by a clear, simple yeah, truth that our position to connect people to a life lived with hearing is nothing short of a privilege. So we'll keep listening and responding to bring implantable hearing within the reach of those who need it. Welcome to the Luminous presentation. My name is Simon Smith and the Europe, Middle East and Africa brand manager for the Head and Neck division. I'm going to be taking 10 minutes of your time this morning to take you through our company and our CO2 solutions, including the Otterlays, which you've seen in action in this morning's case. So I'll start by talking to you about who Luminous are as a company and the system that was used in the case this morning. And following that, I'll walk you through the system components, the technologies we have before finally moving on to the otology specific solution that we have in the Otolase. So who are Luminous as a company? Luminous are the world's largest medical laser company. We are a global developer, manufacturer and distributor of laser and light based devices for surgical aesthetic and ophthalmic applications. We have over 900 employees at a company and a global distribution network that operates across our various business surgical and aesthetic units. We have 265 patents and have 260 plus FDA clearances with a global install base of 80,000 plus. In addition, we have a presence in over 80 countries across the world. So let's start by talking about the CO2 laser system that was used in today's surgery. The system itself has two main modes of operation, utilizing free beam and fiber-based technologies. In the free beam, the energy is delivered through the articulated arm in conjunction with the operating microscope or the handpieces. When using the operating microscope, there's a choice of three AccuSpot micro manipulators. And that depends on the model of operating microscope that you're using in surgery. The Surgitouch scanner is used in conjunction with the digital AccuBlade or the DAB. 
a semi-robotic linear cutting within the larynx or the airway. The CO2 fiber-based technology provides the precision of the CO2 laser energy, but overcomes the line of sight problem when using a surgical operating microscope. And I'll come on to a little bit more about that shortly. The fiber lays can be used deeper within the airway and easily within the oral cavity. The otolase is used specifically for otology surgery. The Acupulse Duo itself has application uses in otolaryngology, maxfax, plastics, gynecology, and also thoracics. It's an upgradable platform. For example, it can be used in aesthetic applications. As you can see from the bottom of the screen, we have a wide range of CO2 laser accessories. So let's focus on the Surgery Touch Scanner and the Digital Acublade. The Surgery Touch provides, produces shapes from the energy which is provided by the Acupulse Duo. And it can be used with hand pieces to produce circles for ablation. It can also be used with the Acuspot with the digital Acublade, the DAB. It produces lines or curves for cutting. And the scanning micro manipulator is able to produce unprecedented precision and reprodu reproducible results for the surgeon. So when the surgical objective is to treat the pathology with the maximum possible control, while minimizing adjacent healthy tissue damage, also preserving organ functionality, the DAB micromanipulator is an indispensable tool to precisely incise, excise, or ablate the tissue. What does that mean for the patient? It actually reduces the risk of complications and increases the patient's quality of life. An example at the bottom of the screen there is the different modes. For example, cir circular ablation, linear and curved incisions, and also ablation. Let's focus a little on the depth of penetration. So the CO2 laser has the smallest zone of thermal spread in comparison with all other energy-based devices. So in theory, the depth of tissue penetration for the CO2 is only 0.1 millimeters. But for a surgeon, that means unprecedented precision and the ability to operate near really critical structures and delicate anatomy, such as those in otology cases. So let's summarize the digital Acublade, but it's virtually char-free laser delivery, which ensures clean excisional margins, has reproducible tissue effect. And the system has preset parameters customized to the treated tissue and patient's anatomy. As I mentioned before, the system is compatible with all the leading surgical microscopes. It also gives the surgeon maximum control as his incision shape, length and depth and orientation are easily adjusted by the surgeon. The surgery touch scanning movement may reduce the procedure time when compared with conventional CO2 laser microsurgery. And finally, minimal heat buildup in tissue equates to accelerated healing time. So for the patient, fewer post-operative complications. So I mentioned before that I would el elaborate further on the line of sight problem. So with the traditional CO2 laser microsurgery setup, the laser can really only be fired in a straight line and usually that's around 400 millimeters. So if the targeted tissue is not in the line of sight of the operating microscope, it's gonna be impossible to treat that with the CO2 laser. For example, in the lower airway tract or the pharynx. For that reason, Luminous launched the fiber-based technologies with the CO2 a few years ago. For example, the fiber lays. This can be used either through the dedicated hand pieces or through the working channel of an existing flexible scope with the endoscopic protection sheath, such as the bronchoscope or the transnasal esophageal scope. Fiber lays comes in two options, the single use or the multi-use fiber, which is called the Endure. The Otolase is a fiber delivery system to perform ear surgery cases, such as a stapedectomy, cholesteatoma, and also adhesions. Finally, in the bottom right of the screen, we see the dropping guide, which enables the fiber lays to be used with the Da Vinci robot.
So let's move on to the otolates. So we know that the goal for middle ear surgery is the restoration of sound conduction in the middle ear. What are some of the risks associated with middle ear surgery? Excessive sounds, vibrations or heat during the surgery can cause temporary or permanent adverse conditions. For example, facial nerve damage, hearing loss, tinnitus, vertigo or nausea. With the otolase, we have three different system components. We have the fibre, which can be used up to 24 times. We have two reusable handpiece options and two single-use tip options. In addition, we have an improved fibre drape. Now moving back to the handpieces, they're ergonomically designed, they're thin, they include a grasping mechanism, they're easy to manoeuvre and hold, and will facilitate clear sight visualization for the surgeon. There's a, a selection of two single use tips, which are either straight or they're curved. Both of these options are highly durable and facilitate reliable energy transmission. So the total working distance would be the combined length of the handpiece, the shaft and the tip, which will allow adequate operation with the selected microscope. So on the left of the screen is an example of a complete starter kit, which includes a box of 12 curved tips, 12 straight tips, a straight handpiece, curved handpiece, which is a complete starter kit. So here's an example of the complete assembly of the Otolase kit. So firstly, we have the fiber, which is the piece that connects into the system, which is either the acupulse duo or the ultrapulse duo. Covering that fibre, we have the sterile drape. And the fibre is connected to the handpiece, either the straight or the curved handpiece. Finally, to complete the assembly, the tips are connected, the straight or the curved tips are connected to the handpiece. So what are some of the clinical benefits overall of the Otolase system? Well, the Otolase supports delivery of an efficient procedure, therefore enhancing safe middle ear surgery. We have precise and controlled layer by layer removal of the diseased tissue. And for the patient, there's less chance of vestibular injury. Overall, the non-contact non nature of the system minimizes the possibility for any inadvertent trauma to the adjacent structures. So thank you for watching the Luminous presentation. Please go to www.lionweb.org and search for the Luminous booth where you'll be able to click on the screens to register your interest in any of the Luminous products that you've seen here or indeed to receive further information on any of our products overall. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, we're very happy that the moderator team has arrived, and uh, John has lost a part of his arm, but that's okay. Uh, John, maybe you can introduce uh, your British colleague. Yes, well, here we are again. Uh, next to me is Emma Stapleton, who's a young colleague from Manchester, who did a fellowship in Glasgow and Manchester and his main interest is uh, hearing rehabilitation. She's uh, performed uh, nearly 100 cochlear implants last year on the team that she leads and over 70 of those uh, herself. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, sound bridges and other middle ear implants. So although only five years into her consultant post, she's would be regarded uh, in the UK and probably around most of Europe as extremely experienced. So I'm very glad to have her here today because I don't know very much about cochlear implantation, but Cor and uh, Wilco, who you can see further along the line, do. So I think we've got quite an exciting day today uh, because we're going to see at least uh, eight or ten operations. And hopefully uh, we'll have you all sending in questions on social media to take advantage of the knowledge of my compatriots sitting next to me. Yes, welcome here, uh, Emma. Are you uh, up to it? 
Thank, thanks, John and Wilco. Yeah, I'm definitely up for it and looking forward to today's surgeries. Thank you. Very good, very good. Well, we hope uh, that you will be able to have a very active uh, intervention and a role. Uh, we're going to switch to uh, India, of course, Cor Kramers, but everybody saw Cor Kramers yesterday too. Cor, I'm very happy that you took the trouble to come and jump into the car <coughs> and drive and to get here, because I think you, you've traveled most this morning. <laughs> Uh, Mohan, uh, we can see you and now the world can see you. Hello, good morning from Utrecht to Chennai. Uh, can you, uh, we did get some audio from you, but we don't hear any audio now. Can you check if the audio is working on your side? Mohan, can you ask your technicians to check the, the microphone? Can you put your hand up if you can hear us? Okay, good. We don't have audio. So they must connect the audio to the computer uh, so it recognizes the, uh, the head, uh, the, your headset. I'll let you sort this out, because I also see that Finland is uh, getting ready. We'll, Boa, we'll be back with you in two minutes, so your, your technicians will have the time to check. And we move to Finland for a moment. Good morning, Arno Dietz. Good morning again. Good morning, Wilco. Good morning. It's a pleasure to hear you, and it's nice to hear your heavenly voice and to know that bi-directional audio is working to the studio. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we are glad too. Yeah. So what we are planning is a cochlear implantation under local anesthesia. And um, for procedures under local anesthesia, I think they are they are pretty straightforward, but there are small details which you have to keep in mind. And uh, Perhaps Timo can show the camera. We have to uh, set it up a bit differently. We have to keep enough space uh, under the drapings for, for the patients uh, not to get, you know, uh, 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 that it's not getting no. too, too hot. Uh, constricted <laughs> for them. Yeah. Yes. Too hot. It's it's too too yeah. and, and that they have enough space. This is very important. Uh, then here we have an infusion warmer, perhaps Timo can show it too. We have uh, the irrigation uh, hose is wrapped around the, the infusion warmer to have, have uh, the irrigation uh, fluid warmed up to prevent a caloric reaction. So th did you do any uh, caloric testing before the surgery? So the, the, it's only the cochlea that's not working and the, the vestibular system is working? Uh, we do, don't do it on, on routine, but um, in, in those cases where we have some, some residual hearing left, then it's uh, most often the vestibular function is uh, nearly uh, normal. And okay. this is always a concern if you, if you do a if you drill the mastoid under local anesthesia. So also you have to be very careful not to use any, any uh, external irrigation uh, from the syringe, for example, uh, because this can elicit and then uh, quite, quite bad nausea for the patient and, and uh, rotatory vertigo, obviously. Uh, as for the... Um, Infiltration, uh, we use lidocaine with epinephrine, and this is uh, in, in principle what we would use uh, for any uh, middle ear surgery, let's say uh, uh, myringoplasty under local anesthesia, for example. But obviously, we have also to, to infiltrate in the area where we want to uh, drill the earplug. Uh, sorry. Now I don't cannot hear you. Oh no! Can you hear me now? It's John. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I can't hear you. I okay. didn't hear what Wilco yeah. said. It was more, no, more he was, or less he was, coming from... He was, that was coming from somewhere else. He was talking about a technical okay. problem. Um, just um, for, for my benefit and the people that are watching, do you use some sedation as well as the local anaesthetic or is the patient fully awake? Uh, uh, yes and no. So uh, <laughs> in, in, in some... In, in, in the most cases, we do not use uh, sedation anymore because we have found it contraproductive, uh, especially when you're using uh, uh, drugs like propofol, where, which are very hardly dosed because the patient can fall asleep. And uh, when they wake up at one point during the surgery, then they might be very disorientated. And then you are in trouble because the patients want to go out of the OR right away and therefore you have to be very careful with that. But with that patient, we use Dextor, which is uh, Dextomididine, which is uh, uh, a sedative uh, drug, but the patient will be completely cooperative. So it, it just gives, gives a kind of a relaxed uh, feeling, but, but uh, the cognition is not uh, altered in any way. And this is especially important because uh, we want to uh, monitor her hearing during the insertion. So there are, if we look at the, at the audiogram, we see the left ear, which is uh, now operated, that there is a 70, 60, 70 dB threshold attenuation. Uh, normally, this can be quite, quite uh, successfully managed also with hearing aids, but in her case, uh, the speech uh, uh, perception is, uh, with hearing aids is low, and uh, she basically has no benefit of, of the left ear hearing aid, so, so we uh, uh, scheduled her for implantation. And we have seen that, that the whole process of implantation is much more easier when the patient has some hearing left. And I think it's not good policy to, to uh, wait, let's say, another five years and the patient is, uh, has no uh, good functional hearing. Okay, so we, I have infiltrated and, and in principle, we can now start with a skin incision. And uh, if you want to join this, it's okay. But if there's somebody else who has to show something more important, then uh, you can switch, switch to your other clinic. We'll watch you for a few minutes because we're having some problems All with right. uh, sound from okay. India. So, yeah, this is quite important. So, if you just talk us through your approach, that will be beneficial. Yeah. Mute. And uh, we use use a quite normal retroauricular incision. And normally, I would put put the Im, uh, implant uh, body at this at this point. Uh, I usually try to try to find a place where the skull is uh, as flat as possible because this is then easier to to drill a good implant bed. And uh, when we drill the mastoid uh, cavity open, then then there are some some uh, caves that if you do the procedure under local anesthesia. Uh, for example, the uh, the mastoid air cells, the layer which is just beyond the middle dura blade, this is some, sometimes uh, quite sensitive to drilling. So in those Here. cases, I to you too. Thank you. try to leave to uh, some some cells on on the uh, middle dura blade. Uh, Arno, can I ask, do you use a facial nerve monitor when you're operating under local? No, this is not practical in, in these patients. So, 
I will patient said that at this point is it's a bit painful I will just add some so how how are you doing I, I know Emma you are also doing cochlear implantation on the local so what's your uh, procedure thanks so currently I'm giving my patients a choice of local or GA and about two-thirds are choosing GA and are quite surprised to be offered local. About a third are very keen to go ahead, so I'm doing about a third of them under local at the moment. Do, do you give your okay. patients the choice or is local the default for you? No, no. This is this is a option which we offer. The default would be definitely the procedure under general anesthesia, but there are some patients who who refrain from cochlear implantation due to concerns uh, regarding uh, general anesthesia. And, and I think this is a, a very good option for them to get, uh, to get the treatment. Yeah, I completely and, agree. Uh, I, yeah. I, I've had a few patients who were turned down for cochlear implantation previously because they weren't fit for GA, but they've now had it under local and they're very, very happy. I know. Yeah. Uh, we'll be with you in a, in a minute again. We want to switch to Chennai to Mohan, because I think they okay. do have audio, and uh, we are very happy and uh, enthusiastic that India has joined us this time. Good morning, Mohan. Uh, we had some uh, slight problems with the audio. Can we check if it works? And welcome. Yeah, uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, can hear, you but hear but the we can hear you, but the sound is still too low. They need to amplify the sound a bit, but we can oh. hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to send you greetings from Chennai. This is a very hot Chennai. It's about 34 degrees here and it's midday. Uh, and uh, you know, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us this uh, opportunity to be part of the Lion Network uh, program. Uh, the first program, is, uh, first case we're doing is a, a revision cochlear implant. Uh, and uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Raghu, will uh, just briefly give an introduction about the case. Uh, I hope that our audio uh, is sorted out uh, in, in a short time. Uh, yes, so we, we can hear you, but it is difficult. There's a little bit of echo, but at least we have sound. And yes, please do show us the patient. Yeah, Raghu, please. Professor Wilko, John, Emma, can you hear me? This is uh, Dr. Raghunandan from uh, Murph in Chennai. Yeah, your sound's fantastic, much better than... Oh, wonderful. Hi, Raghu, lovely to, to hear you and see you. We don't see him yet. Can you hear me, Emma? I can hear you. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, lovely. Thank you. So, I have a small presentation regarding the case. Uh, if I can load my presentation, I can show it to you. They have slides. Super. Switch to the slides, please. Yeah, we can see your slides now. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, it's a privilege and pleasure to be part of this live international autology network today. And uh, we are coming to you live from Chennai, south of India. And that's where we are, along the eastern coast, uh, near the lower southern part of India, southeastern tip. And as you know, Chennai has always had a very rich medical history. Uh, we've had very eminent autologists coming from here. And in fact, today we have the uh, medical tourism hub for entire Southeast Asia here in Chennai. And we cater to nearly about 30 to 40 countries along the Southeast of Asia. So I welcome you all to uh, this uh, institution where we have been practicing autology for the last 25 years at uh, Madras ENT Research Foundation. So uh, hearty congrats so, and uh, good for all of us to link together in this interesting panel today on a couple of uh, cochlear implants. The first case that we have today is a revision implantation. So this is a nine-year-old uh, girl uh, who was born of second degree consanguinity. She was born full term normal delivery, but uh, she had low birth weight and uh, she developed birth asphyxia. She was kept in uh, NICU for a couple of days uh, for resuscitation. And she was diagnosed to have bilateral profound hearing loss, which was congenital diagnosed at the age of three. So she was, uh, as a routine, worked up for cochlear implantation and she underwent uh, CI 
at our institution in 2016. Uh, this was done through a conventional posted tympanotomy approach uh, via round window. Complete insertion was achieved uh, using a metal Sonata flex soft electrode. The surgery and the postoperative period were uneventful. Uh, she also had a very routine auditory verbal habilitation uh, period for about 1.5 years and she was a uh, very good performer. She had optimal uh, use of the implant and she attended normal school. Unfortunately, uh, three months ago, she had a history of trauma with head injury. And uh, since then, there was a rapid deterioration in the performance of the device. And she could not benefit by using the device over the last past two months. As you can see here, this impedance uh, telemetry shows that most of the electrodes are out of range. The growth path impedance is not in control. And as you can see that uh, we were not able to reprogram or map this implant. So this suggested that the child had device failure. And uh, that's the reason uh, that we had to rework her. Uh, and this is the post trauma CT scan, high resolution scan, which shows in fact that the cochlear implant electrode array is in situ within the cochlea. You can actually see that the electrodes are within the uh, turns of the cochlea. And we could not obviously see any gross uh, injury uh, in the uh, current device. Since the implant was not working up to the manufacturer's uh, recommendations, we knew that this was device failure. Hence, uh, today's plan is for us to uh, do a cochlear explantation and simultaneously do a reimplantation in the same year. Um, now I will take you on to Professor Mohan Kameshwaran, uh, who will uh, perform this procedure. And we'll join you soon after the procedure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Raghu. And uh, we'll go, hopefully, you can hear me better now. Uh, can I have the top lights, please? Yeah, that, that's much better, Mohan. It's much clearer. Well, th thanks for that really nice presentation, Raghu. And just to let the audience know that you can ask any questions via the social media links. Uh, so I'm... I'm I've already infiltrated the patient, it's all draped and ready. And uh, you can see there's a previous incision here. So I'm going to use the same incision. So uh, let's start off with the incision now. Obviously, a, a bit of scarring from the previous surgery, but are you planning to reimplant with the same type of electrode? Yes, yes, we have to use the same. Um, yes, that's the point. Might be just for the viewers. Um, you know, a few thoughts on uh, device failure. I think, you know, uh, I, 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 I've grown sufficiently cynical to say that almost every electrode will fail at some point of time. So I think it's only a question of when, you know, uh, more than if. Uh, so, uh, you know, all, all electrodes uh, are, you know, uh, going to fail at some point of time. But on an average, I think most of them do function quite well for many years. Um, I mean, we started our implant program in 96. And we, all our early uh, implants are still, most of them are doing very well. Um, so I, when patients ask me how long an electrode is going to work, I generally tell them, you know, it's uh, from our own experience, we can say at least about 25 to 30 years. Uh, but, you know, it's also possible that if you implant a child, it may go through at least one or two revisions in a lifetime. Um, that's not so bad. Uh, you know, because uh, it's it's not a uh, you know a very uh, disastrous procedure. So uh, basically, uh, a, a simple device failure from trauma in children is not at all uncommon, unfortunately, because most of them are quite boisterous uh, and they tend to fall, bang their heads, you know, and so on. And this child is no different. It's a very sharp, very intelligent child. It's got a very good. 
speech and language, as Raghu said, but also tend to be a little boisterous. Um, no, so no, 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 it's John here. Um, how is uh, implantation funded in India? Is it a, a government funded thing or how, how does it work? Uh, sorry, can you say that again? How, uh, ha how, is, how is implantation funded in India? Funded, is it, yes. Is, is it yes. Uh, we have a, a, a state sponsored insurance program. Uh, which we were actually instrumental in, in getting going in the beginning. You know, it was a tough fight initially, but uh, from the last, for the last 10 years now, we have a state program which uh, funds one implant, uh, free of cost, for a child below the age of six. Uh, and so every child in this state, it's a big state, you know, our state that has about 70 million people. How many? So, 70 million. 70 zero. <laughs> Know, much bigger than uh, you know many countries in Europe. So the Britain, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's what Britain, yeah, size of Britain. So the uh, implantation is totally free, uh, and also you know if uh, it falls within the uh, warranty period, or even if it's not, or even if it's outside the warranty period, they would still get an implant if there is a device failure, free of cost. So there's no cost to the the child uh, in these procedures. Um, we are now fighting, of course, for the for the second implant. You know, and I think we might get it uh, pretty soon. We are just showing them cost-effective studies in our own population to convince the policymakers. Uh, so, you know, that's where we are. But but we have a, a, a state state-sponsored or state-funded insurance program which looks after this. In interestingly, uh, we also managed to get funding for pediatric auditory brainstem implant. So we, we have quite a big series of brainstem implants in our, in our center. In fact, about almost uh, 65 or so till date, pediatric. And all of them get funded free of cost as well. So it's quite a, uh, a comprehensive program. So Mohan, uh, Mohan, we're going to let you go a little bit further with your drilling and then come back to you in a few minutes. We, we're going to go over to Arno in Finland, who's operating the local, and then we'll visit Munich, then we'll come back to you. Yeah, to tell you exactly, we uh, we need to go to Finland, Finland now because they're doing it under local, but I can see that Hanover is getting ready in Munich as well. N Munich is not sending any signal yet, but they are connected. Okay, we'll be with you uh, shortly, Mohan, okay? Thank you. So Arno, we're back with you. It's John here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now I have opened the Antrum, and now I will instill some local into the Antrum, and this will uh, also, hopefully, when there are no membrane, go into the middle ear space, and uh, which will make the preparation of the of the round window a bit more easier and uh, again we have here the exoscope which is uh, very beneficial in patients under local anesthesia because the patient uh, don't have to move his head so in in an uh, awkward position and uh, it it gives me more flexibility in that sense now i will uh, looking, I, I was looking for the for the incus, and here you see that I left some cells here on on the on the middle dura plate because if I, I, I know, could you bit, could you zoom in a little bit in your operating field? Ah. All right, just a moment. Okay. Sorry, I have to. Okay, uh, is that the, better yeah, now? The, the, yeah, it's absolutely better. Thank you. Okay, so so you see what, what we have here are cells on the middle dura plate, and, and and I will left these. I I will not fill these away because this is this is a bit painful for the patient. Now I just want to fill in here in the front and looking for for the short previs of the incus 
and then I will thin again I have the my irrigation is not the best in the world All right. Okay, now you see the semicircular canal. So I have to ask the patient just to move her head just a little bit on the side. Okay, and now I have to relocate my. Okay, that's about it. And obviously, when when we're doing on the local, we have to deal with some kind of head movement. But but this is not not a big issue actually. So we we can get away with it. So it's not okay. I, I know only, we, sw only, we switch back oh, to India just quickly because he's okay. um, onto the implant and will be with you well constantly uh, as always. Uh, please okay. compl compliment your technicians because it's uh, apart from the scope that you're using the audio and the picture picture is always very good okay thanks great okay Mohan we're with back with you uh, yeah I just opened the capsule the fibrous capsule yes and, uh, the, the receiver stimulator uh, there is uh, in the bed so I'm just going to follow the electrode now I've incidentally just uh, raised a, a potential red it is electrode. And you can see a very nice capsule. I mean, usually, even within about three months from surgery, the capsule is very well formed. And that's a, a very good protection against uh, subsequent infection. But, So I uh, teach my residents that when you are doing an explantation and reimplantation, you, know, you treat the electrode like you would treat the facial nerve. You know. So gently, you know, uh, working on it. So you want to keep the electrode in situ till the very last moment. You know, it's easy to pull it out, but you, it's a uh, reason why you want to keep it till the very end. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. Um, we're going to switch back to uh, Finland for a moment, but uh, we'll keep an eye on your progression. Okay, Mohan. Hello, Arno. We're back with you. Hello. Right now, I'm thinning the posterior wall again. Should be very thin in order to do a good posterior tympanotomy. And now I will switch to a three millimeter coarse diamond burr and uh, will expose the uh, incus, which is uh, beneath this uh, uh, bone, which has to be removed. And then basically we are ready, ready for uh, opening the facial recess. And we should be able to see the incas very soon. 
Okay, here we have it. I will show it to you in a very short while and here, you, here we see it quite nicely. And now I can, can drill and thin the posterior ear canal a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, yeah, sorry. Ah, you see the ink is uh, there. Yeah. Ink is, ink is down here. Yeah. And uh, you can expose it also a bit more if you like. I don't think it's necessary because we now know where the insertion is. Now I will uh -huh. put some uh, lidocaine again, which will flood into the tympanum. Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure you have all everything anesthetized. Uh, Arno, yes. we, we need to, because we have four simultaneous surgeries going on, and I would love to <laughs> see yours all the time, but uh, we need to go to uh, Munich as well, to uh, Joachim Müller. Uh, but we keep an eye on what you're doing, because we have a multi-view here, so please indicate okay. when we need to go, go back to you. We realize that you're doing your procedure under local, so if you indicate by anything, we'll come to you immediately, okay? Yeah, great. Okay, okay. thanks. More. Good morning. Um, Mu uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Joachim, yeah. Uh, in Munich, can you hear us? Yes, good morning John, good morning Wilco. Good morning. Welcome yes. to Munich, sunshine, good yes. weather. We're here with Sorry for taking a little bit of preparation time, <laughs> because it's not because of the anesthesiologist, they were very friendly this morning as usual, so I'm, I'm grateful to them. But they know just if uh, it does not speed up, we will do the so proclaim plan under local. The uh, reason for delay was that our engineer pre prepared some intraoperative electrophysiology because this is a patient 15 year uh, deafness after trauma. Uh, she put cotton tips into her uh, ear and then she became deaf. And the MRI, which was done from outside, uh, was not of good quality, so we could not see a nerve, and thus we preferred electrophysiology. Yesterday, our radiologist did a better MRI, and we could see the nerve. Anyway, we found it interesting to show intraoperative uh, brainstem potentials uh, to you to the measurements. I'm not sure if we can show the measurements, but we can discuss the setup later on. Th that's very At interesting. At the moment, uh, uh, the moment I'm drilling the bed, and let, let me take the opportunity to send some greetings to Mohan in India. We heard his voice and also Ranjit it this morning, which was good, and we do hope to see somebody and somehow in the future in person. Greetings to Mohan and to Ranjit. Enjoy. Thank you, Joachim. Thank you. Nice to hear your voice. And to Arno as well, of course. Okay, no, no. Otherwise, he feels that we forget him. <laughs> Arno, please respond. <laughs> yeah, thanks and greetings also from Klopio. Also, also uh, Joachim has to come come to join us at one point. So you can't join yes, the Arno, we, we have heard that and we count on this. And you know, we are people who, we do what we say, we are coming. Well, but please right. guys, re well, remember this is not a dating site. We are drilling the bed and we will also drill some tie-down holes and fix the implant. I'm old-fashioned and I'm old as well, but uh, yeah. it was recommended since ever to tie down for avoid implant movement in the first uh, parts of or in the first time course after surgery. Kilian? And I'm tunnel? also a collecting bone pate to later on wrap around the housing and close the canal uh, between the housing and the mastoid. I will spend a few words on that and this will give a nice controversial discussion discussion with Thomas Leonard's tunnel. Mm -hmm. so. 
which which I think is maybe even more sturdy. Eh? Uh, the, the 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 canal that he drills in Citelli is impressive. Yeah. But it's a good discussion Pardon? for later. On. Well, I'm I'm always yeah. very impressed with the the Hanover tunnel that they drill. It's uh, it seems very sturdy. Yeah. Very but strong. to say it's the Hanover tunnel, it's not the German tunnel. Huh? <laughs> The Bayer, Bayer so, and, uh, <laughs> approach. Well, I have nothing. Uh, the, the the idea be behind the tunnel is serious and is well to be considered, but um, I don't like the, to fiddle the electrode under the bridge. But uh, obviously, in Thomas Lennart's hand, it has been proven with many surgeons to be. A good tool, but uh, we have trained our surgeons. We are four at the moment. Yesterday you met um, Dr. Folger, and uh, today Dr. Simon is with me. Schablone. Ja, gib mal die weiße Schablone. Ja, und die Helms Pinzette. Okay. Ah, I have to show you something else, but wait a moment. Bora, geben Sie mir einfach das, was ich möchte. Und One moment. If you have nurses that respond to just give me what I always need, then you have a very good team. <laughs> Yay, lion. Yeah. So we're, we're going to leave you for a couple of minutes, go back to Arno because he's operating on the local and then we'll come back to you in a few yeah. minutes time. Well, we're, I'm conscious your Learjet is waiting for Washington so we, we know that you have time pressures as well. Okay, so uh, coming back to Arno in Finland. Arno, can you hear us? Arno in QPO, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, very clearly, very clearly. Okay, great. So I have opened uh, the facial recess a bit, and I will again put some local in it, so it it's for the patient easier. And I will now uh, widen it in order to get get a good access to the round window area. And then I will prepare the round window. Uh, we'll remove the bony overhang to have a good view. And I hope that in this case we have a have a larger round window so that I can demonstrate the insertion of the modular electrode, which is quite an. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say the electrode is uh, definitely more difficult to insert than uh, lateral wall electrodes, but still, I guess, worth a while. And, uh, and let's see whether we can do some ECOG measurements too. Otherwise, we can, uh, we can uh, stimulate her ear and ask whether she can hear the sound during the insertion. I think this is quite quite sensitive for for uh, excluding uh, intraoperative uh, hearing uh, deterioration. Anna, I'm impressed that you're combining so many technologies in one case. Um, could you tell us a bit about your learning curve using the exoscope for this kind of surgery? Yeah, um, that was asked yesterday, and uh, to be honest, uh, it was not. It was quite steep because we. I haven't used it uh, very often before. Uh, yesterday, I was asked about how many times, and I. I just say about 30, 30 times, but actually it's not not that much, really. So um, from the I remember you said twenty. Me, I remember you said twenty yesterday. 
<laughs> okay, that, that, that's more, 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 more the truth, yes. Okay, so it's the second time, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from numbers, are there, are there any specific challenges you found using the exoscope for this kind of surgery? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's about the uh, uh, resolution of, of the picture. For me, it's, uh, it's still not the same quality uh, like, like through a good microscope. But definitely for the spectators, this this is uh, has much more quality quality picture, and therefore it's uh, very very feasible to use it for lion web, for example. Yeah. Do your spectators have three D goggles? Yes. Yes. Great. Yeah, I know it's inherent to the technology if you use uh, 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 what is it uh, polarized glasses you divide the total resolution of the screen into two, one for each eye. If you would do a shutter glasses, which are heavier, which are less convenient, I suppose, then you don't yeah. lose, then you don't lose the resolution. So if you would have the same technology with a shutter glass, your resolution would double. Okay. So you know the technology, I don't, so. Absolutely. I know it, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, but, but as I said, it's uh, it's quite feasible still, and uh, and it's quite easy to navigate. So I I do like it a lot, and also for for uh, uh, for the sake of uh, ergonomy, it's much better than than the microscope. And but but we are we are not yet there, so. Uh, I know that Emma, you have been uh, part of a of a temporal bone study where you used the uh, exoscope. So, can you comment on on your experience? Yeah, I completely agree with you that the ergonomics is preferable, and that the picture on the screen is is brilliant for for um, viewers wearing three D goggles. But it is a different feel, isn't it? It's um, it's just a little bit different from the microscope. So. So I think there is a learning curve there. I'm not sure I'm ready to use it on a local anaesthetic cochlear implant because <laughs> my patients do tend to move a little bit. Well, the, 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 what, what you see, I know, which is very interesting with the scope, you can rotate your camera and stay in focus. If a surgeon yeah. moves his, his microscope to see the other part, we have a screen or an image that's unusable for transmission typically. And you have a constant feed, which is less, uh, there, there's less um, movement of the screen. I can see that. Like all microscopes, as soon as you put your eyes against the, 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 the oculars, there's a slight movement yeah. of the screen. Yours is very, very stable. And the quality is very nice. But uh, I, I did yeah. do uh, some surgery uh, with the other, uh, I think it's a German uh, thing. It's nice, but it's, it's something you need to get used to. It's driving an electric car and not uh, gas or something. You know, it, it ch life changes a bit. But we'll see. I would yeah, not be surprised if it's going true. to be the future. Well, I guess, I guess it will because uh, I think I know of too many uh, ENT specialists having neck problems and uh, and, and this is definitely, definitely much, much more forgiving, Anna Kobiki, much more forgiving for if, if you do a long surgery. I'm, I'm just more relaxed to do, do the things under the, uh, under the exoscope. Uh -huh. we, need, we need to go to uh, Joachim Müller for a moment because he is doing the, the, the South, South German knot uh, in the Braun. We'll be back with you in a minute. Okay. Joachim. Jo Joachim, we're with you again. Hello, good. I'm still here. Yes, I see, but you're, you're, you're now doing your tie down. At least yes, the it, tie down yes. is like a spider web. Um, it is recommended for all companies to tie down the implants or at least fix and immobilize, immobilize it. But uh, since the early days when we had this wonderful uh, come before the ceramic housing with a flat surface uh -huh. uh, yeah. we used to uh, drill po uh, holes and fix it with a with a spider web which you will later on will see 
uh, which puts some tension on, on the implant and allows for fixation and uh, is also against movement. I think more important than uh, drilling, uh, uh, than tying down is to have a tight subperiostal pocket, which we have here in addition, and an anterior rim not to allow the implant to move forward. Die weiße Schablone. Okay, raus. Klemmchen. And later on we will place the implant underneath the, the thread and then you will see how to create uh, the spider web fixation. So the next step is uh, mastoidectomy. This patient is completely deaf. Bora. So we decided to have a standard electrode. Joachim, good. Um, we will keep an eye out on your progression and I, I understand that the team here is dying to go to Chennai again because we see that moment yeah. is slowly best, uh, searching for best the Best regards to Chennai and from yesterday you know and we have learned that we proceed slowly in Munich. <laughs> I, I, thought you, I thought you got a Learjet he wanted to catch to Washington. And Tish, you over to me? Mohan, we're back with you. Oh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, hello, Joachim, and thanks again. Uh, uh, nice to hear your voice. And also, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, as you can see, I, I have sort of, uh, you know, opened the capsule now, and I'm slowly working my way uh, into the uh, cavity now, the massive cavity, and I'm reaching, uh, trying to reach the, the site of the posterior tiparotomy. Uh, it's a uh, gentle work, uh, but I think we are progressing uh, very satisfactorily. Uh, once we get that, I have to still drill out a little bit here so that I get a much better view of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, round window uh, later on when we are inserting. So I'll, I'll come, I'll do that in a short while. But uh, there we are. We are now entering the the mastoid cavity and slowly going towards the, uh, the, the, the post-neprotomy site. I'm, I'm going to drill a little bit of this and add a little bit of bone here so that I get a nice view of the, the we can see the post-neprotomy there quite well actually. Okay, so let's uh, have a, a, a diamond burr, uh, please, and uh, let me take this out. Okay, I have a cutting work. We need to have a, a good angle uh, for viewing the uh, round window and this uh, newborn which is formed. It's amazing how much newborn can form. Sometimes the entire mastoid cavity would be closed in children. Tremendous osteogenic potential. 
and in a very short time too sometimes. Just want to remove sufficient bone to have the angle that I need. We are not interested in saucerizing the cavity as we normally would for a mastoid. Amazing how much fibrous capsule can point all the way from from the, the receiver bed right up and even into the cochlea, which is why we, many of the children with implants can get an acute autism media and get away with the impunity because the capsule forms a very good protection. Thanks Mohan, so we're going to let you carry on with your electrode and we're coming back to Arno in Finland. Thank you. See you in a bit. Okay, hello. We are just in the course of doing the implant bed. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is so interesting, but uh, I think you can come back uh, when we are inserting the electrode. Then. Okay, good. Then, then I, we go to Munich. Yeah. And yes. Thanks for indicating. Okay. Joachim, back to you. Herr Polterauer, stellen Sie sich mal die eine OP-Leuchte mit der Kamera so ein, dass man nachher die, äh, die Messungen sieht und spielen wir sie ein. We would like to see the lighting being perfect for the measurements. I fully agree with you, Joachim. But we're back with you. Joachim. Professor Müller. Yes. We're back with you. Okay. Well, I'm drilling through the mastoid. We have a very compact bone and a big kerner septum. The dura to the middle fossa is a little bit deep, which is reached here, and the sinus is a little bit protruding. So we have a small space to go down and hopefully reach the antrum. CT scan indicates that there's uh, air around the horizontal canal, so there's hope for a good orientation. Eine Nummer kleiner den Sauger. We have a uh, hinal spine down there, middle fossa, dura, sinus, and we have to create a little overhanging to protect, protect the electrode. And Und ein großes Antrumhäkchen suchen. 
Uh, there we have some aerated cells here. And my antrum hation. Uh, so we can see there is space and cells behind. So we hopefully And now you see there are air cells coming. Sichel bitte. There are air cells coming and here it is a little bit pink and this indicates that we are close to the ear canal but there's still bone on it. Is this a three millimeter burr you're using right now? Huh? Is it three millimeters burr? I don't know. I just <laughs> uh, look at the size in the surgical site and then we introduce the burrs by ourselves, just comparing what we have seen uh, to what it fits. But we can check how long is the burr? 2.7. So, good estimate. Wait a moment, stellen Sie mal den Bohrersatz dahin. You see, this is, uh, uh, these are our burrs, and they are, uh, the numbers of the diameter are written down there, but we just look to the tip, and I feel this one would fit nicely to open the antrum, so I'll take it by my own. So the nurse or the assistant is not blamed for giving me the wrong burr because if I took the wrong one, it's my mistake. And that is time saving and keeps all the assistants friendly. There we have some space, but not knowing how deep I am and how close I, are to the, I am to the dura, I open the last millimeter with a diamond and today we are lucky we have got sharp diamonds which is not always the case if you use uh, reusable burrs we don't use single use burrs because this is too expensive Sichel? In the depths we see a little bit of compact bone and all the experts have already seen this which may develop to be the uh, horizontal canal. From the CT scan we found a high uvula bulb which we might see through posterior tympanotomy as well. We will see if we can demonstrate. Und Herr Polterauer macht sein Messequipment. Sie können schon mal die Elektroden annehmen, alles und die. Ja, ja. Er soll mal die Elektroden schon angeben. Und verkabeln und stabilisieren und so. Das Testgeweiß lassen wir so. Erstmal, ja. Even the patient is deaf, we, we avoid to uh, touch the incus 
and use the diamond burr as in every mastodectomy. Now we see where we are. And we switch to a cutting burr to proceed a little bit faster before Wilco and John are complaining about the speed of progress. Okay, we go to Mohan for a moment because he is about to ready to do some yeah. crucial steps. But we keep an eye out on your uh, progression. Okay. Uh, see you in a minute. Hello, Mohan. We yeah, thank you, John. Uh, so we are we are now ready to exchange the electrode, and I have uh, defined the please post your microtomy side uh, there, and uh, I can see the electrode going into the round window niche quite clearly. Uh, I've cleared the capsule uh, around it. So now let's take the old electrode out. And uh, we already have a very nice pocket there, mm. so I don't have to refashion anything. Just taking it out now, very gently nudge it out, and it'll just flop out. Okay, so keep it there. Oh, the assistant hold it. Suction, please. You can have the new electrode now. Slide it into the same pocket. And what device is this? This is a Medel, I think. The Medel, the same one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Synchrony One with the wire coming from the side, isn't it? The newer Synchrony Two has the wire in the centre. Yeah. Right. Uh, what, what are the advantages and disadvantages, do uh, you think? Well, the, so the new okay, so now we will take out the old one and uh, hold it. Can I have a anyway? Keep the new one ready. And this is a 31 millimeter electrode, yeah. is it? Yeah. It's a really long one. But uh, that's important. Right? You need to have an electrode which is not longer than the one you had inserted in the first place. Yeah. That's important to keep in mind. Okay, just, just pull that out. Put your Any issues with off. frequency mapping? That good? Yeah. Okay. Because we do get issues. Be a plant. Have a claw. Fantastic. Static, but it's just because of a drop of saline up in case of water. Thank you. Suction. Going in, slowly. 
That's, that's looking good, Mohan. Wilco's just wondering about remapping uh, children who have a, a explant and reimplant. Do you have any experience of, of their outcomes? Yes, uh, they do very well. Actually. They do very well. I think the important thing is not to give them a long break, you know, from their, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the uh, deprivation the, uh, of the sound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah from the uh, from the hearing world. So they need to they need to have it done soon. And if you go back and then look at their outcomes, it's very good. They don't really lose anything it's within about two or three months. But I mean, more than that, uh, and I'm sure it will have some kind of effect in the long term. So mm -hmm. we, we managed to get all the electrodes in, just as we thought. Fantastic, well done. The airway went in quite smoothly, which is what I would expect. We're going into the capsule ring. Uh, so let's just tuck this in. Uh, Let's do a quick hop to a Okay, we're going to switch to Thomas Lenz for a moment and we'll, uh, we want to thank you for your implant, uh, Mohan. Talk to you later. Professor Leonard, good morning. Uh, let me check where you are. Professor Grohlmann. Uh, Morgan. So, how are you? So, <laughs> I'm doing well, Thomas. How are you? Okay, um, I'm okay with all this kind of uh, stress you see we have with uh, Ukraine and so yeah yeah it's the sad so we have now we have now uh, 800,000 refugees in Germany just from Ukraine <coughs> okay well, so here's the case presentation yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what we be uh, be focused so we have here um, a young man and Can we have a slightly loss. louder louder audio to the technician? Okay. Slightly louder. Okay. Can we a bit the microphone louder? It's better now? Hello? Yeah, it's getting better, but it's, it can still it's have better a little now bit. Yeah, yeah, it's getting better. Thank you. Bit yeah. more, more volume you have now, or is it okay? It's good. It's good. Uh, so, can you hear me now? It's okay. Yeah, much it's fantastic. Yes. Okay, so that's a young, young man, 23 years old. He had sudden hearing loss on the right side since 2009. Uh, normal ear on the left side. Um, and um, so he is now go undergoing cochlear implantation on the uh, right side. So there's basically no residual hearing uh, left. And we will go for a Medel Flex 28. So cochlear length is, 20, is 40 millimeters. And uh, we are, are aiming for a so-called cochlear coverage. Uh, that means the part of the uh, whole length which is covered by the electrode of about uh, 75 percent this has shown to be the uh, to give the best performance so lo too long is not good too short is not good and that's um, what our formula is so we go for this um, uh, 75 percent which is then 28 millimeters do you measure and, um, your do so you that's me uh, basically what you see yeah. do you measure your cochlear so duct length yeah, with with otoplan we have, you see how we measure it, mm. the length of the cochlea, and it's just that we p uh, put dots on the outer wall oh. of the cochlea. You see all along, and then uh, the whole thing is unfolded, and then you can b uh, measure the uh, length of the outer wall. No? And this gives us a t uh, 40 millimeters. The so range is between 30. Um, three and uh, 46 millimeters that's what you can get uh, sub uh, substantial uh, individual differences no? uh -huh. and therefore it makes sense to choose the electrode uh, according to the length of the cochlea and um, medel has this portfolio so you can choose between uh, 20 24 26 28 31 millimeters depending on the length of the cochlea no? that's it and uh, therefore uh, we, uh, <coughs> we we have chosen it now for this length uh, uh, Thomas, right. so is mod modular hugging, is that old-fashioned nowadays? Uh, sorry? Is modular hugging electrodes, is that old-fashioned now? Uh, not old-fashioned, but it's a different concept. So the modulus hugging is probably uh, going to um, a coverage of about 60-65% uh, uh -huh. uh, because it doesn't go deeper. No? So it might be that you don't stimulate all neurons which are more apical. 
-huh. And then you can discuss, of course, with the patient what you would go for. Um, I think um, there is um, some evidence that the uh, cochlear coverage matters. No? Okay. So that's what I just want to say. Yeah. So, okay, so then the, the next, please. Uh, come Here you see now it's normal anatomy, cochlear in the axial scan. That is coronal scan with a round window. Nicht, können wir die mal ähm, die Mikro, wenn Sie mit dem Punkt drauf gehen. Ich will nur eins zurück. Uh, here now you see it going up. Here is a round window niche, and then the MRI scan. So you see here nerves are present. Um, a cochlea is fluid filled, no sign of obliteration. Um, so we should have a normal anatomy. And we later on want to use a robot, the robot toll for the insertion of the electrode. Um, so we'll show um, how you can do that and um, how slowly and even we can insert it. So, okay, that's um, basically what we have as a plan. No? So here we must just make our cut here posteriorly and the uh, ability clips when you have the clips, yeah. Okay. And uh, then I marked the position of the of the implant. You see here, yeah. Just uh, and uh, so that's where we would like to go. We just start here. Sorry for the delay, um, but we will. We'll speed be, up. No? We'll, we'll be here all, the, all morning and afternoon. Uh, good. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on your progression. I think we need to go to Munich for a moment and maybe to Finland, but now yes. go to yeah, the, uh, best, Munich. Yeah. But we'll be with you again in a few uh, minutes, okay? Okay. Okay. Professor okay. Müller. Joachim. Hello. Hello. We're back with you. Yes. Um, I'm about to pro approach the facial recess and uh, try to sort out where the facial is. Give me my nadel. What we see is horizontal canal, facial nerve in the tympanic segment. Some whitish tissue here, some whitish tissue there, and a little bit of gray down there, and some cells in front and more lateral to the facial. So I'm slowly sorting this out, which will take some time. Obviously, the facial recep is uh, compact bone. But we will see. In principle, there are two ways to, to find the facial here below the horizontal canal or more downwards towards the, toward the tip and the studio must eat for Raymond. That's the way how Fish described to identify the facial because it is said that it's down to the Studio must do it for Raymond more constant. And we will see what will work out for us here. There are some Okay, we're going to head back to Finland because I think uh, Arno is about to do his uh, electrode insertion. See you in a bit. Tuo on nyt vähän huono toi kuva jostain syystä. Mä en... Hello, Arno, we're okay. back with you. Hello, so Milko. Uh, you just ask about uh, is more dialer hugging old fashioned. <laughs> I'm I'm not quite sure whether it is because this is a quite new electrode. Who makes it? And, uh, uh, this is from Cochlear. This is uh, the so-called slim modila electrode, and this one is really delicate. Uh, this is uh, perhaps from the dimension. This is. Uh, 
uh, one of the, or this is the uh, smallest one. Mm -hmm. And it comes out of the package, it comes pre-curled, and then you have to load it, and uh, then it gets straight. Mm -hmm. And and when you insert it, then you have to insert uh, the first part. I can I can show it to you now. I will load the electrode. I I usually dexamethasone. Uh, sorry. I put some drops of dexamethasone on it because it uh, glides much more easier in this way. And and then you have to load it and you have to you should be able to see it yeah just a moment now now you have loaded and now it's in in the sheet here and this is yeah. a silicone sheet and this is the first part which has to be inserted and and if if you have inserted it then you will will pull out this whole uh, insertion device, so to speak, which is which is uh, a metal sheet with a silicone. And uh, in comparison to the uh, advanced electrode from Cochlea, you can reload this one. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a benefit in in case you are in trouble or there's there's some issue with the with the insertion. I, I know, maybe you're aware of it. Uh, I, I published some article about reloading electrodes, and I know the, the original company was not so very happy about it because it was not uh, what they wanted us to do. <laughs> but it's good to see that, uh, say, 10 years after they, they did develop an uh, electrode that uh, apparently is supposed to be reloaded. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the way we have to uh, work because we have to... Uh, uh, tell the companies what we want. This is this is important. Yeah. And uh, but but it takes some time to. Uh -huh. well, for well, I, I know you were aware of some of the publications. I'm not sure if you were aware of my publication about reloading. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, believe me or not, but but I'm quite aware of your publication. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I know you've interrupted uh, once in a while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, very good. Yeah. Okay, now we have a quite nice view. I just a bit struggling with with the angle because this is quite important to have it have it just right. And but you see, we have a good good view on the round window. It's nicely prepared, so it's. Exposed very well, but it's still not where I want it. I have to change the angle a bit. I have to come from up here. Now I guess you are able to see it better. And yes, I we can, can zoom in. And then we have to focus, but it's not there yet. I have to go to the... Okay, now you see it quite nicely. So, uh, this is... Uh, Arno, just, uh, just, just one second. Uh, Mohan, we see that you're going to measure your device. If you have time, please wait for us. We'll be with you as soon as we can. Continue, uh, Arno, sorry. Okay. So, uh, now I will make the incision to the round window. Now we advise the patient that this is now the most critical part of the whole procedure. So our nurse is communicating with the patient. She has her hearing aid on the other uh, other side and this is uh, connected to a long tube. So I will insert in the anterior aspect here you see it's and now I will use a hug in order to elevate the round window membrane a bit more in order to that the fluid can can 
come out of the cochlea more easily because the electrode's dimension is quite still quite big uh, with respect to the uh, uh, cochlea uh, intracochlear size. And now what I what I have here is a uh, is my special insertion forceps, which is designed in, in this way that I have the possibility to look through it. In, in that case, it's perhaps not, not so uh, problematic. Yeah, you, yeah, I have a wide access, so it's easy to insert. As you can see, the orientation of the wing is very important. It has to be uh, at the angle of the incus, in, in the same direction as the incus. And now I need the second forceps. Now the patient is getting a bit uneased. Hopefully she will not move because this is now the very critical part. But now she is now she is moving a bit, which is not. I'm not so happy with that, definitely. So I have to. So now I'm ready to. Oh, this is not. Okay, now we should. Yeah, okay. Now it's done. This was not the easiest. I'm going to do it. Did it? Okay, do it. Can fix it. Okay, so. Very impressive, uh, I know. So now what we do now is we will uh, directly do the uh, measurements in order to be sure that we do not have any tip fold over. So then do you do a spread of excitation measurement or what kind of measurements do you do? Uh, we do uh, the trans impedance measurements and then we can also do the spread of excitation. Because with I the spread of both, yeah, sorry, yeah. Well, with the spread of excitation, you can see the foldovers. Uh, you can detect them uh, easily. Yeah. yeah, that's true, and this is definitely uh, the best way to to uh, diagnose it. Okay, we can. Uh, if you want to go to uh, India for a moment, yes, India for a moment, and then we can show you the measurements here. Okay, good. Um, if India is still online, we like to see India. Let's me check if they are. I think they are. Uh, Mohan, India, can we, can you show us the measurements? We're still with you, uh, I know, but uh, as soon as we get a good audio or video, we'll move over. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're moving to India. We'll be back with you and later Hanover and Munich as well. Okay. Hello, Mohan, India. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we are just closing up now, and then they're going to be uh, doing electrophysiology. So yes. we're going to. You have time, uh, and we're all set to start the next case whenever you you tell us to do that. No, we're here. We we see we we see all the feed. So as soon as we think it's interesting, we switch to you or to the, someone else. Uh, can you show us the first measurements that you're going to do the impedance? Or? Sorry, can you say that again? What? Yeah, oh, you're showing it now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So an audiologist uh, Ranjit is just checking it.
Hello. Yeah, I am I'm Ranjit, I'm the audiologist here. So we have done the first measurement. The first measurement is the impedance field telemetry. Yes. As you can see this piece. I mean, uh, now we measure the impedance of each electrode across different electrodes. And um, we get three important informations. We get the status of the electrode, number one. Number two, we get the, the level of impedance across electrodes. The third one, it also gives information about the coupling and the integrity between the, uh, the implant and the uh, coil which is placed on the uh, uh, skin. Now, you can also see another important um, information, which is the voltage telemetry. So the voltage telemetry is the voltage uh, which is across different electrodes when you simulate. And one of the important indicators, if you really want to see if the electrode compliance is good, if the voltage telemetry is more than 50 percent in across any of these electrodes, then we know that there is some kind of damage to the electrode or there's uh, trauma to the electrode. As long as the uh, values are less than 50 percent, and it's perfectly fine. You can also see the numbers over here. So these are the maximum um, voltage uh, between electrode 1 and the, uh, uh, let's say, electrode 2 and electrode 1. Uh, the value should be less than 2.16 in this case. If it is more than 50% of 2.16, then we can suspect some kind of uh, damage or trauma to it. So in this case, the uh, voltage across all electrodes is perfectly normal within the mess. And also the uh, impedance values are within the mess. It says around the, some of the maximum is somewhere close to around the 13 and the minimum goes somewhere close to around the 6 or 5.5. And usually the impedance values are a little higher intraoperatively um, uh, due to, um, uh, could be um, uh, some air bubbles or could be because of the uh, suction that you use it and insertion of that. And the impedance value goes down postoperatively drastically. So now we have a range, the range should be somewhere around 0 to 15 uh, kilo ohms. The value is well within 15 kilo ohms in this case. And all electrode status is perfectly fine. There is no short circuit, there is no uh, 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 open circuit in any of these electrodes, everything is fine. So prior to the insertion of the electrode, we also do something called the, um, um, uh, the uh, in-package telemetry. So we look at the telemetry before we yes. take the implant out of the package, just to check if the electrodes are fine. So and in this not, case, you're not going to measure NRT measurements? Sorry? Are you not going to measure the yeah. NRTs? Yeah, we also do the ART measurements now. So I'm going to measure the ART so you can see it on the screen. So uh, we choose four electrodes in this case, electrode 1, 3, 6, 9, and okay. 12. Uh -huh. So we look at the amplitude growth measures. Well, I think we get uh, the picture. I think it's uh, nice. It's very good to use yeah. the camera to show us the uh, telemetry. Very nice. I think we don't have any questions from the moderator side. I think. Uh, thank you very much. We'll uh, be waiting for the second uh, surgery uh, coming up from uh, India. We now have to go to uh, Munich because uh, Jürgen Miller is progressing uh, swiftly as well. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be in con contact with you in. Uh, a few minutes, I suppose. Thank you, India. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, I'm still still busy with my facial recess. Yeah, it looks like you're making some good progress. So I think we can just see some facial nerve sheath in your tympanotomy and some air in the middle yeah. here. This will be maybe facial. You see the accompanying yeah. vessel down here, and uh, yeah, we will open up here. You came in the right moment. <laughs> uh, here's still some bone on it. It took me some time, but uh, we need to progress slowly because. We want to clearly identify the fallopian canal. 
And now you nicely can see the whitish tissue of the nerve, the whitish tissue of the corda and the gray area where we find uh, air behind the facial recess. And that's what we are going to open now and Jetzt hätte ich gerne mal einen braunen Sauger. Füllung eins weniger. Dankeschön. Fünfundvierziger. In the depths we get an idea where the head of the stapes is and I do not want to open the facial recess too deep because from CT scan we have to expect a high ugular bulb which sometimes can reach the level of the round window but we will see in a minute. Now we see his stapegial tendon. That's a lovely view of the stapedius tendon. We're going to head to Finland and we'll come back to you shortly. Thanks. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, we're with Emma, you. Are you there? Ah, yep. okay. Yep, we're with so, you. So uh, we, we we did a trans impedance measurement and it looks very well. Perhaps um, we can stop it and show it to you. We and uh, now you cannot see it just a moment perhaps we can see it in a short while the problem is with the spread of excitation we need here you see the trans impedance measurement the heat map of it where where you can see uh, whether or not there are shortcuts when when electrode uh -huh. when you have a tip fold over and the electrodes are are facing uh, against towards to it and then you see see it on the heat map quite nicely but but this is I would say uh, a normal normal heat map for this for this particular electrode so you, so you and now we have also uh, I know one question so you base the, the knowledge of uh, fold over by rapid changes of impedance suggesting that it's a fold over that it's closer to the other electrode or what's the theory yeah, th th this is uh, as I understood it. Yes, okay. and and uh, and we can also now do do the uh, ECAP measurements and ask ask the patient whether or not they uh, she can hear hear the sound. And uh, this is this is basically one one of the opportunities also to test it. Okay, we will proceed with the with the measurements and meanwhile my colleague Matti will, will close the 
uh, close it and uh, then we are ready to switch to the to the second operation later on I know I must compliment you again you always bring something new to the table and it's very good and um, very impressive thank you very much at least I was very impressed I'm not sure about I was that. also very impressed thank you Arne <laughs> Okay. okay, thank you very much for your moderation. Okay, uh, we, see you later. We see you later. We need to switch to Hanover for a moment because I see Thomas Lennart or Professor Lennart is progressing uh, nicely as well and at least touch base before we go back to uh, Munich. Thank you, Arno. See you in a minute. Okay. Professor Lennart. Hello, so. Hello. Yeah, hello. So um, you see here a hole in the uh, posterior ball. There was a previous surgery done. Uh, to uh, make an exposure of the um, timp uh, of the middle ear, and uh, I think there was some damage created. So we have to put in some cartilage later on to repair it. Now you see here the uh, the few in the antrum, and we have here exposed the uh, uh, the incus. Um, so bit mal die Nadel So you see here there is the incus no? moving. Yeah. And uh, due to this very curved, not my up name, bitte, due to this very curved outer ear canal, yeah, which makes it a bit more difficult to to find the uh, way to the facial nerve, I have to work around here and then also try to find the quarter. Now you see, uh, probably here the facial nerve is still covered by bone, it runs like this here. And that is now the entrance to the middle ear. Bitte mal den Bohr. So we started to open here the. Das ist jetzt was nochmal? 2015 oder? Gehen Sie mal 1,5 bitte. This was a 2 uh, millimeter drill. I think it is too big. We have to go now for 1,5 and see that we get here our clear vision uh, in the posterior tympanotomy. So, of course, the goal is always to preserve. First of all, the facial nerve, and second, to preserve the corda, which normally should be okay and possible. But the um, the the um, first priority is, of course, always the facial nerve. So that's um, we do uh, we do it here with monitoring. So here is a corda shining through. Just here, a small strip. It starts here where it bleeds and goes down here. And here is a facial nerve, so it's, I, I have not uh, exposed it further because we want to cover, let it cover it by bone so that later on there is no damage by the um, by the electrode for instance. So you see here now we have an entrance already to the um, uh, to the middle ear, so I will turn the patient a bit and uh, we have a better view now into the um, middle ear. It's now a 1.0 uh, uh, suction tube, just for it's for your um, orientation. And here now we, we already have entered and see probably the, the pyramidal process. So I have to open it further, more inferiorly. The drill is 1.5, so the the recess normally is uh, is about two millimeters here, yeah, and so that's uh, and I think it fits quite well. And so, bit more 1.0. So now we go a bit um, further downward. So you see a web sta stapes tendon coming, and uh, so we have to expose it more. In fairly, you know? so the corda is up here. So we have now to. It's a bit of a different anatomy. I would you always like, of course, more straightforward. But here it's narrow, so we have to yeah, we have to deal with it. Now, Professor Lennox, we have a yes, hello, Emma. Hiya, hiya. Um, we have a question from um, the YouTube channel, and it's about the cochlear duct length. Asking whether you do this for cochlear electrodes or just Medell. No, we do it in all in all cases because you see there are other uh, lateral wall electrodes such as the uh, um, the nucleus SA or uh, 622, 
where you can decide how deep you insert it. That the electrode has uh, kind of some, let's say, a possibility to f uh, move it deeper or less deep. And so we can then decide how deep we want to insert it so that the active contacts of these electrodes are deep enough in the cochlea. Because if it's too shallow, then probably you need some um, low frequency information. If you have a large or long cochlea, um, to insert only 20 millimeters might be then too short. Um, so the patient might miss some low frequency information. And so that's why we do it in all patients. And uh, so that we, this, you can do it in a different ways. Also, Autoplan, that is a software released by Medel, offers that. They, they have a different ma a way to measure with, with A and B diameter of the basal turn. Uh, but it's, it's, I think it's also doable. And that's easy from which any CT scan you have. No? So you see now facial nerve is here, corda is here. And I have to work now through this quite narrow space here. No? Uh, so I would, wish I would wish to have a bit more space, but that's how it is. No? And you're drilling with the 1.5 at the moment, I think. If I understand correctly. Uh, that is a 1.0. Okay. Already, you see, because I want to keep the corda uh -huh. uh, and, the f and the facial mm -hmm. nerve. Corda is here, mm -hmm. no? and facial nerve is here. So it becomes narrow. Um, and we still are not down to the level of the, of the, um, of the round window. So we have to see. Um, here we have facial nerve. I still can lower it a bit, not that much. If you want to keep it covered, no. But that's the way how we have to deal with it. And there are some years where it's ext extremely narrow. So now I think we now uh, have a few on the round window niche in the in the depths. I will focus on that, and when we we go there. So, ich brauche noch mal das Häkchen. Und zwar 06er Häkchen. So here we see now the round window niche. Down here. And so we can remove a bit of mucosa. They also did uh, this um, put in some connective tissue when they checked for uh, the adhesions of the membrane uh, once he had this sudden hearing loss but I think there's not much left from that tissue so now I think I have opened the niche and then we can slightly see the round window membrane coming eh? so bitte mal das um, den um, Bohr weiter so now we go Again, here is 1.0. We have one size smaller left, that is 0.5. Can we mal die Spülung auf 5 gepulst setzen, bitte? So we will then use intermittent irrigation. So, I uh, set my arm. You also can remove a bit more bone here on the pyramidal process which gives us a bit better view without injuring the muscle. A bit better view now, but still it the membrane not there. It's a really nice view on your camera, by the way. We can see the anatomy beautifully. Thank you. Can, can you see anatomy, yeah? Can you see it, yes? Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, it's Hickchen nochmal. So, it's still not there. We still have to move a bit more. I just want to 
make sure that we don't touch the uh, round window membrane. So you see now it's more of the membrane visible. The black one in the in the uh, very deep here, no? but still not um, exposed enough. Wieder mal weiter bohren. So in the CT scan we saw that, or the cone beam CT, we saw there was a, a bone overhang. And you can estimate already how much you have to drill. But in the end you have to do it. So now it's better. Better take my time in order to not touch the membrane. This is especially important in cases with residual hearing. So you see now that we come quite good to the round window membrane now. Bitte mal das den Bohr 05. And uh, so you see, it. now I think it's now better exposed. It's still a bit uh, up um, anterior. That is now 0.5. No? The electrode is 0.8, so So it should be already enough. I think here is a bit of, yeah, here, but I think I, I leave it. Uh, because for the electrode insertion, for the metal, that's enough. If you have, um, um, like what, what Arno used, this electrode, you need more space. Yeah, you need more uh, exposure because the tube has to go into the cochlea too. Yeah, that's that's right. And it's uh, the, the diameter is significantly uh, significantly bigger. Do you think that would would potentially have influence on recital hearing or anything? Well, I think you have make a large a larger opening, which could in principle do it. I think especially the problem is that you don't now um, uh, you don't know exactly um, how deep the tube should be placed no? um, before you release the electrode. So I think now we have quite nice anatomy here. And what I do is to make a, a, a bone slit uh, for uh, the fixation of the electrode. So what we use is a, is a bone slit here between the corda up here and the facial nerve down here uh, in order to place the electrode later so that it does not slip out. It's a lateral wall electrode. And all lateral wall electrodes have the same uh, issue that you have a, a risk of electrode migration eh? or dislocation, which can occur after surgery. It's not at the time of surgery, but after. And so we have to fix it. So there are different ways to do it. Uh, Joachim Müller has developed the Müller clip, which is just a modified vascular clip. And uh, here we try to do it just by the, so to say, the bone clip. So here the facial nerve is already coming. Here it's become soft, so I can't go further here. And to, to do this slit, of course, you need to you need to um, know where the facial nerve is. No? You can't do it can't do it just blindly. So noch mal den 1 bitte bohr. So the, the electrode is 1.0. So we have a diameter. So the uh, drill should pass. So that's now you see we have to enlarge it a bit.
So now we have it now. And can use it for then compression. Bitte den as Häkchen nochmal. This is not facial nerve. What you see, that's just. Yeah, no, that's not facial. That's uh, just here in the Mokoda. Okay, so now that's what we, we have prepared. And now I have to make the bone bed, which is a bit more the boring part huh, of the surgery. But I think this uh, is well visible now, everything, and uh, we can we can then go for the insertion later on. No? So now we will do the bone bed. Ich brauche dann den Saughaken. Okay, we go to Munich uh, for a moment, uh, Thomas. Hmm. Dann, dann den großen Blaster okay. Sauger bitte. Und dann einen. Hello, Joachim. Hello, Rico. I managed to open the facial recess and finally we were able to expose Nadel, bitte. We can see the high ugular bulb down there, the round window, the yeah. etwas weniger geschwungen. The tip of the incus and the round windmill yeah. membrane where the lip was a little bit taken away. We are just about to connect uh, the measuring system. Den Stecker dazu. Und wo muss die Ballelektrode hin? Okay. <laughs> Good. What what time is um, France uh, supposed to be? Noch mehr länger? Ich mach's einfach, lassen Sie mich das machen. This is the, the electrode which is connected to the measuring system and we have two contacts, jetzt um, Freya. As in the early days we have a ground electrode. Modern implants don't have a ground electrode anymore. They have the ground electrode schlank anatomische on the housing. This ground electrode is placed deep to the temporalis muscle. I'm not sure if you are in picture. We are absolutely, uh, well, we don't see the ground electrode. But um, huh? yeah, now we do, <laughs> now we do, yes. It always flips Maybe back. Maybe older <laughs> ones already o or Im will uh, remember the single channel ballpoint electrode for extra cochlear stimulation in the beginning of the 90s. This here is a tube which cortisone spülen. Cortisone. This is an idea which comes from Yama Uchi in Japan. They did some investigations on cortisone application while electrode insertion and I saw that while visiting him and he's a nice man and so I copied Yamauchi the paper is out jetzt etwas spülen stop yeah. schwarzer sauger und die 45er häkchen schwarzer sauger ist dann und dann brauche ich die elektroden pinzette Now you see the elec electrode pink set. The pink set, the forceps has a less contacts and the silver schieber bereithalten. Can I just talk over you for a minute, um, uh, Joachim? Bezier, we can see that you're starting 
but you're not due yet for another 15 minutes. And don't so please don't uh, complete the operation before we come to you at 10. Yeah, now we do the measurements at the moment and then we can wait. No, 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 Joachim, I'm talking to Bézier, not you. And tell, tell him not okay. to expose the name of the patient. Yeah, Bézier, you're showing the name of the patient as well, you have to be careful. We'll come to you, come Thibaut, in 15 weit minutes. Muss ich rein, bis, uh, dicker. Can you hear me? Thibaut, can you hear me? Show me a thumbs up, if you can hear me. Okay, you I have to present you the case. No, we, we, we're going to come to you in a few minutes, okay. Okay. Ten, ten minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, the electrodes are in. And we can switch to a, a screen where Mr. Polterauer can show you the measurements. Just yeah. Now you see the electrode is inserted to the thicker part, which indicates that we have inserted all the electrodes for measurements. Uh, Jürgen, please have your technician switch to a camera or something, because we only have a black image now coming from you. Ah. For the audience, we see on the left side, we see Professor Lenars from Hannover doing the surgery. On the right yeah. side, but we Yeah, we tried to switch to a camera. Munich. Haben wir ein Kamerabild hier? Yes, much better. Thank you. Er muss noch. Ah, ja. Now you see the, the screen of the technician of our engineer, Mr. Polterauer, and he's checking the impedances first, I think. Now it is a difficult time for a surgeon sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But uh, Daniel, what are you measuring now? He's still with the impedances. So impedances are how high? Uh, the, the range uh, five, five kilo ohms are the impedances, which is quite nice and low, which of course gives credit to the surgeon. But they're always that. And now you see, what do you see on the screen? Okay, EABR. Was soll man runter? Ja, der Raum dunkel machen. Haben wir eine Wärmedecke an? Ja. Machen wir aus. We have some artifacts through uh, anesthesiology machines. So we try to switch off everything which is not absolutely needed to reduce the artifacts. Is it better now? Yeah. And it is better now. Yeah. Where is the response? Good. So we feel uh, better when we insert the electrode also uh, in terms of responsibility against the insurance companies that in a patient who has uh, no 
radiology visu visible nerve that electrophysiology confirmed auditory integrity and thus we will uh, proceed and implant and standard implant since we have no measurable uh, residual hearing in this case. We will insert a dummy electrode first because there was a suspicious structure in the apex of the of the cochlea which could be not differentiated furthermore but it's always uh, um, to discuss that with the history uh, ossification or a tumor may occur. Dann können wir mal die Dummy Elektrode aufmachen. Nein. Uh, are you happy with the measurements? Ja, yeah, we do the basal electrode. So we complete uh, the apical stimulation and had apical ABRs. Of course, this opens nicely this discussion if it basically looks different, how long the electrode should be. Is the stimulus the same as in the apical? Uh, not the last ones. Uh, the one we also got some no, the stimulus. The stimulus is the same, or is the stimulus here uh, higher? Yeah, larger. I don't know if you can see the answers on the screen. Oh, yes, you can. We must be careful because Ranjit is uh, watching in Chennai and he is also very experienced in EABR and uh, fitting of the ABIs. So we are, must be careful what we are saying and what we are showing. But I think what Daniel shows here is is reliable and proves also discussion with Ranjit. Okay, you have answers? Yeah. Where, where we have answers, please show the stupid surgeons the electrophysiology answers. How does the basal answer compare to the apical ones? So then I said we need a higher stimulus uh, for electing the EABR answers in the basal part and we need lower stimuli in the uh, apical part and get higher amplitudes in the apical part. Okay. Okay. Can you show? Yeah, this is right. Faith. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Okay. We will remove the the system. Yeah, with the microscope, electrode pink setter. And. The nice thing with these measurements is it does not take too much time and keeps the surgeon confident. So, Schüppchen. Ja. Und ein Sauger. Und dann die äh, Elektrode, die Dummy-Elektrode. Ja.
Oh, nice. You can see laminar spiralis ossea through the lens effect inside the cochlea. Bisschen spülen. Ja. Ja. Okay, since the ear is completely deaf, I will drill a little bit more and get a wider access to insert better the electrode. To get it really up to the A pain. I would not do this in a patient with residual, with measurable residual hearing. The dummy electrode. Erstmal die dummy electrode. Is the picture centered? Den silbernen Schieber. Den silbernen Schieber, bitte. a little bit of resistance 45er klein und den Stapelsauger der nicht verstärkt ist soll ich einen anderen auch besorgen? ja Kleineres 45er. Ja. Haben wir noch ein kleineres Häkchen? Ja. Noch zwei kleine. Noch eins. Mhm. There is still some resistance in the depths and I do not know what that means. We will see. So I insert very deep. The idea is if there is a tumor outside The electrode will mobilize the tumor and we can uh, irrigate it out since there is no function. 
We don't see any damage to the stapes due to the trauma that was reported from the patient. So, electrode and ping set them. And um, we see the electrode coils nicely. There is no tip fold over, nothing. That's also quite interesting that these long electrodes do not produce uh, tip fold overs, which one of my colleagues has worked out. And uh, luckily enough, we have not to observe this, what, what uh, other electrodes produce up to 10, 12 percent. So we try again. And then we'll open the implant. Silver and Shiva. Where's the electrode? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we open the standard implant. Um, give me a spitz, spitz, share. Die schlanke anatomische. Sauger und schlanke Anatomische. Herr Poldauer, gucken Sie mal, dass das das richtige Implant ist. Bisschen spülen. Ja. Schwarzer Sauger, der ist dicht. Oh, you nicely can see the modulus spülen. Okay, implant. And baby back. Helms Pinzette. Grüner Sauger, bitte. So halten. Und die schlanke anatomische Pinzette. Nein, wenn ich das reinspülen haben will, sage ich es. He's probably got a nice bottle of wine hidden in the background. Okay. Thibaut, can yeah, you hear us? Yes, I, I hear you. Good. Would you like to so present, I... present your patient? Okay. It's a young man who was operated on for cholesterol in 2018 in another center. Clinically, he has a left hearing loss and intermittent otorrhea. 
the otoscopy shows a reinforced tympanic membrane with a little central perforation. And you will see the audiogram. There is a mild mixed left hearing loss. And the CT scan, uh, or the scanner. Uh, Thibault, Thibault, Thibault yeah. honestly, yes. I don't think we, you should transmit the patient's name on uh, over the internet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so re you really need to remove the name of the audiogram, otherwise we cannot show it. Okay, I, I hear you uh, not yeah. so good. It's yeah, Thibault, the, just on the audiogram, yes. what, when Michelle's showing it, we can see the patient's name. He needs no, no. to use okay. a black Excuse pen to hide it. Yeah. yeah, okay. No. So carry on. Yeah. 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 On va montrer le scanner. Le scanner vous montrez. Hop. Pas le haut de la foule, pas le nom. Allez, vous voyez, il y a un nom petit. So you see the CT scan who show uh, subtotal uh, soft tissue opacity into the mastoid. L'autre, hop. Which seems to be in the right position, I will revise it, okay. and in the MRI, with a diffusion uh, weighted <coughs> MRI, yes. there is a very big <coughs> image of uh, residual cholesteatoma. Gosh, it's ginormous. Okay. So, uh, I'm here with a canal wall up tympanoplasty, uh, with revision of the osiculoplasty, and uh, mastoid obliteration with okay. uh, bioglass. This is a glass bone uh, bone substitute. It is phosphosilicate, uh -huh. and I will show you how it looks. Up. We go under microscope, and up. You can see pen smooth. It looks like sugar. with fresh blood and the blood uh, will coagulate and make the bone substitute more uh, coherent okay. and okay. solid and more easy to use. Okay, good. It's very convenient uh, and uh, it creates no inflammatory post-operative reaction. Uh, in my practice it's uh, a better material to obliterate mastoid than bone pate, for instance. With bone pate, there is very often, postoperatively, some inflammatory reaction, and not with the glass bone. So okay. we mix it with blood. And I add some rifamycin drops to prevent infections. Okay. And so the bond will coagulate during the surgery and I will use it to obliterate at the end of surgery. I show you the otoscopy speculum. An aspirator. Th 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 thanks for that. We're going to head back to Hanover now. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Hanover, we're, we're back with you. We can see two images, very nice. We can see Professor Lennart and Kirsten Willenborg. I'm a macro camera. Professor Lennart. Das muss ich mal zeigen. Haben wir das hier drauf? Ist, kann man das sehen? So, yeah, just hello. Welcome. We try to uh, deal with French technology, which is sometimes difficult. So, you're repairing no. something yourself? Yeah, no, we, 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 this is. Uh, we have to prepare the robot hole, which might be difficult sometimes. 
Do you think we can go to Munich for a couple of minutes and come back to you? Is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will come back and then I show you. No? That's Please wait for us. Eh? Don't proceed. We love to see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Braune Sauger und die schlank, schlanke anatomische. With the thin anatomic, we're back with you. Professor Müller. Spülen. Spülen haben wir nur, ja, also mit dem Schlauch, Yamauchi. Professor Müller, we're back with you. Schwarzer Sauger. India. It's waiting. Emma. India is waiting. Okay, so we'll head back to India, where it looks like Professor Kamaswaran is about to start his second surgery of the day. Yes. Mohan, we're back with you. Can you hear us? Hello. Hi, we're back with you. Uh, hi, Emma. This is Raghu here. So, uh, welcome back to Chennai. I hope uh, my screen is visible now. It is. Thanks, uh, Raghu. We're back with you. Uh, the implant is doing well, extubated unwillfully, and shifted down to the post operative ward. So, now we are moving to the next case. So this is a pediatric cochlear implantation, a three-year-old male presenting with uh, bilateral uh, severe to profound hearing loss and delayed speech and language development. The child had a normal uh, parental history and uh, perinatal history. Uh, only positive history uh, which we got was that the child had some neonatal jaundice for which uh, phototherapy was given. There was no history of NICU admissions, otherwise the child had normal growth and developmental milestones uh, except for the hearing loss and speech delay. So we did, as usual, uh, audiological test battery, at the end of which we inferred that the child has a bilateral severe to profound hearing loss and the language disorder was secondary to a hearing impairment. So let's move on to look at the CT scans and the MRI. Uh, pretty much normal anatomy that you can see here, a well pneumatized uh, mastoid and a middle ear cleft. And this is an axial cut of the CT scan of the right ear, as you can see there, the basal turn of the cochlea. You can actually see the round window niche there. And behind that, this is a facial nerve. And you can find that there is a nice deep sinus tympany. And that, that's the place where the cora tympany is arising. So there is good amount of space in the middle ear cleft. So it would be amenable for a comfortable posterior tympanotomy. And uh, we can also easily trace the track of the horizontal facial nerve and its vertical segment. So we also, um, as per protocol, did a high resolution uh, three Tesla MRI just to confirm if the uh, cochlea and the vestibule, the nerves, the eighth nerve complex uh, looks good and all of that was fine. We can actually see the cochlear aperture and the good uh, division between the cochlear and the vestibular divisions of the nerve and the 3D reconstruction model also showed normal cochlear anatomy. So the plan today is uh, for us to proceed with the right cochlear implantation. I am shifting into the uh, theater now with Professor Mohan Kameshwaran for the surgery. Thank you. Okay. They're lovely images. Thank you. And thank you for your presentation of the case. And we'll, we'll keep an eye out on your progression and we'll be back with you. As you know, we're struggling because there are four surgeries at the same time, but we try to give you as much as airplay as we can. We now go to Munich. Professor uh, Müller, we're back with you. So, uh, hello. Hello, hello. Back with you. We inserted the electrode completely, and now I'm harvesting some uh, soft tissue. I will create a small stripe, and this will be wrapped around the electrode, and then we will use the titanium clip, which, as Thomas Lennart mentioned, was developed a number of years ago and published in 1996. So that's some years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are. We haven't seen any damage to the electrode and uh, 
the advantage is in our hands that the electrode stays away from the facial nerve which is advantageous for revisions and the facial recess is aerated and you need not to drill a groove or something like that um, close to the facial nerve which also was in the 90s developed by Cohen and the split incus technique by Balcony these are options how to fix the electrode and avoid movement. These atraumatic electrodes go nicely into the cochlea, but also they have sometimes a tendency to uh, slip out if they are not properly fixed. Nadel und den Stapelsauger bitte. This technique with these small stripes comes from Wolfgang Elsässer in Austria. He uses this to seal the stapes, the, the oval niche after stapes surgery. And once we did surgery together, we are close friends. I adapted this to my procedure. I'm not know sh if it is published, but I learned it from him. If some of the youngers will publish, feel free to do so. Hmm. Again, you will have bulb. And now we are wrapped once around the electrode and squeeze it a little bit between the bone and the electrode to have a tight sealing. This might not, so, not be so important in this case, but once you have a gusher or an oozer, this is even more important. Yes. Thank you, that's brilliant. Um, we're gonna head back to but Hanover I now, but we'll be back with yeah. you. See you in a okay, bit. Okay, I'll show, I'm now placing the clip, but okay. that's Wait. fine. <laughs> and then we do the stapedius reflex measurements and then we are close up and then we are moving to the CI conference in um, Washington. Yeah. Is, still, is Thomas Lennart still on, the, on air? Yes, he yes, he is he's rushing as well, so we need to go to Lennart, <laughs> but we want to see your clip yeah, for the moment. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to ask, ask him whether we meet later on in the plane, if he's on the Munich Washington plane or on the other one, that would be fun, then we can meet for a drink. <laughs> Oh, uh, we will drink, uh, we will have a toast on you, <laughs> John and Wilco, uh, and thank you for the nice Schließsängelchen, the nice uh, Lion broadcast setting it up. I know, but it's also Emma and uh, Cor Kramers, Emma Stapleton as well, it's yes. not just us. But uh, Thomas, if you want to respond directly to Joachim, you can, because your audio is now connected to Munich. So, okay, so now... Hello, Elena, yes. grüße Sie. Bis später in Washington. Ja, ich fliege morgen, ja. Ah. So, Joachim, you see cool. Professor Lennart prioritize Lion and not the conference. <laughs> not to stay too long, you see. Yeah. In yeah, and yeah, out. No. Uh, <laughs> in and out. But I, I thought Thomas Lennart yeah. said... Uh, had modelled himself on Tom Cruise's Top Gun Maverick, and he has his own jet, uh, so uh, he won't be taking you, uh, Joachim. But Joachim, it's very clear to see yeah. the clip. Hecht. And now, now we go to the slit technique of Hanover, okay? You can discuss the advantages in the plane on the way back. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joachim. <laughs> thank you. Professor okay, Lennart, so with see. you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we have uh, now mounted here the, uh, the Robotol and you see it's here kind of a, an arm that can be guided and we can move then the electrode forth and back and um, uh, with this Robotol. So I hope that we can work with it. 
So, das ist... Was sagt er jetzt? Langsam oder schnell? Bitte? Okay, gut. So, now let's see. That by, den Fußschalter habe ich da. So, the hopefully we can... Äh, Translation hat er noch nicht, ne? Translation, da muss ich noch hier dran. The translation of the movement you're Sorry. talking about? Yeah, I just was trying to work it. Uh -huh. But you need to point the angulation as well, I suppose. Ah, das muss eine Rotation und das andere, die Achsensperre ist auch noch eine Sache. So, klar, Moment, wo hat er die? Die hat er. And then, wait. Drei, vier, wo hat er diese Achsensperre? Bitte? Ja, ich dachte das. So, okay, now we should have it. Let's see. Das macht er aber nicht, er arbeitet nicht, dann sind wir zu nah dran. Okay, Thomas, do you, do you agree if we... So, we have just to... Okay, we have to preposition it. So, wait. Uh, it's okay. Good. So now, see, and we can move it. So now, you see, we can move the electrodes or as we want. That's just one yes. uh, one point. And then the other is that we can go for also for rotation. So I hope it works. Uh, hat er das jetzt angeschaltet? Uh, das ist ein so, now we have it. So, you also can now use, you see, can you move it around uh -huh. the pivot point. Uh, so, which gives you now just the possibility to, um, to move the electrode in a different position if you, if you want. Ne? So, that's okay. Dann hat er das. Ach, die, uh, kann man das eigentlich überhaupt ganz mal weg machen? Die brauchen wir ja gar nicht. So, now you see, we can guide it. Before we do that, we have to open the cochlea. Okay, so let's see. Ich brauche den 07er Sauger dann einmal. Den 07er, ne? Sauger. Dann bitte das, äh, den Innenohr, das Innenohrmesser, dieses. So. so we have to open the, the cochlea now, just to remove some blood here from the from our previously prepared round window membrane. I hope you can see it in the depth. Yes, we can. There we have it here. Mm -hmm. Gucken, ja, wie rum man es biegen kann, das kann man immer schlecht abschätzen, ne? da, ohne dass man reinschaut. So. So, we actually can turn the, pa the patient table and we can turn the robot hall. So, see now that we make this incision and then, in addition, dann baue ich nochmal das. Häkchen, wenn Sie haben. Ne? Bei 04er Häkchen. Entschuldigung, einmal abnehmen, bitte. Haben Sie es hier? Ja, bitte. Ja. Der, ist, der Seite auf der anderen Seite, ja, bitte. Wenn es geht, danke. Und ne, 04er Häkchen, bitte. Gucken wir mal, danke. So, just open it. So, now it's open. So, you did an incision and you, with a small hook, you opened it a little bit further. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, that's what we what we do, uh, so that we can have a bit better, um, let's say, control over it. And, and it now does I it have, have to, to do with the pressure release of the fluids as well? Um, I think uh, you see for the soft electrodes, it's uh, the contrary. Bit um, bitte to the stiff electrodes. For the soft, you have to do in any way, uh, perhaps. Uh, a larger opening than for the 
for the stiff ones because the stiff one can uh, so danke jetzt brauche ich wieder einen am besten so eine Klaue mal können wir mal sehen ja, the, the, the important thing with this robot genau eine haben <coughs> sie die Klauen haben is that we you need a kind of guidance of the electrode to the cochlea once it's in then it's going gucken wir mal was wir haben so, this is, die ist schon mal ganz gar nicht schlecht, ja. Okay, so this could work. Hier gibt es diese Elektroden, Ele Pinzette, die haben wir auch. Ähm so. Da gibt es eine, die kann man so, die ist vorne so ein bisschen, ge wenn Sie mir die geben können. So, now we can basically try to operate it. Space Maus, die ist einfach immer zu weit weg. Sorry, das ist uh, as a right-handed person probably have a bit more difficulties to get it in the right location. Yeah. You're now moving the robot as well, eh? inserting it a little bit towards the. Um, yeah, it's still not the right yeah. axis, but. But I, could, but I think oh. I have the impression that you move the robot slightly closer to the patient. Bitte? Da gibt es so eine Elektrodenpinzette. Das könnte sein. So now we can. Jetzt haben wir jetzt die Translation, ist es aktiv? Nein, ne? TV. Good. So now. So. So let's see that we get it in. So now we are basically in it. Thomas, who's controlling the robot? Uh, the robot, I, I, I guide the robot. I have a space mouse. So this is now, I think, medium, yeah, yeah. medium velocity. No? So now we go down to, uh, to uh, very slow. Uh, langsam, uh, this is langsam, no? Hammer, yeah, okay. Good. So now I just, uh, you see, that's uh, yeah. the movement mm -hmm. now of the electrode going in, so I can stop any time and could do some measurements if I want. Uh, here now the patient is uh, deaf, you see, so we don't have to do monitoring. But you see now we can nicely guide it in and move it so that it's basically then in the right trajectory if you want. Yeah. So it's bouncing back a bit, it seems. No, no, it's uh, just my movement. You see, okay. I try to be in the right spot. So, um, but it's uh, more or less a full insertion. Mm. So I still will do the rest then by hand. Und dieses Ding, das müssen wir nächstes Mal festkleben, da irgendwo, danke. So, jetzt, um, now I need um, to detach it here. So, Rolf Salcher has a bit different technique. Bitte mal die Nadel leicht geschwungen. So, it's like a snake, this electrode. You see it always, die Nadel, ja. It's very uh, flexible. Ja, yeah, ja, yeah, that's, uh, that's true. So it's attached now, and I can now move mm. back. Die Pinzette haben wir ja. Die ne ne ist schon ist gut. Danke danke. Ich ich, ich ja ich glaube ich brauche sie nicht mehr. Uh, ich brauche sie nicht mehr. So. And gut, das ist jetzt. So 
So now I can move out the holder. Super. Then we get the space. That is now slow movement. You can also go for larger movement or for faster movement. I will do that now. Just get it out of the so go lower in magnification so you can see the whole setting now, the arm, no? and uh, just move it back. Mm -hmm. And now I can manipulate in the in the, uh, to to fix the electrode. In the slit. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So then, a bit of two pinzette or so, no? Ah, die kann ich auch nehmen, wenn wir sie jetzt haben, ist gut. So, ja, 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 alles klar. So, it's, it's basically inserted completely. Now, now I can move it here into our slit. In the so-called, uh, yeah, let's see that it fix. And then, then we can place the electrode right there. So I had a bit, a little, I had not enough space for the for the groove, you know, you saw it was quite narrow, but it should be okay. We will fix it in here. I couldn't go further because then I would have to endanger the the quarter, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good, so th like this, okay. So now we are done and we can go for the measurement. Then nochmal die Spule, wir hatten da so eine Messspule, ne, vorhin für... Dann können wir wieder einblenden, bitte, den... Um, Ich fahre mal den Robotol raus. Ne? So, ist die Robotol, ist das German? German made? No, das ist French. Das ist French Technology. Ah, ja, ja, it's a, yeah. it's, ja, ja, it's a bit complicated, but it's working and they have a CE mark. It was basically developed by, uh, uh, by um, uh, Staircares okay. and Very Guyen uh, from La Salpetria. And uh, I think they did a quite good job. And I think in a few we will. We I, uh, my I'm convinced that we will go for um, for the um, robotic surgery in the future. Um, so I'm adding plaster so it goes because you saw we can do it very even and very slowly. Um, so which means that we have a much better control over what we are doing. So I moved now the implant in position. It's now on the bed. So now you see here it's now nicely in our bed. And I can position now the electrode inside the cavity. So bitte zweimal pinzette. And then we measure, I think, impedances in the first step. And then we go for, let's see whether we get a, um, a stapedis reflex measurement too. So Thomas, we, we need to uh, go to another OR for a moment. Uh, we yes, follow, yes, your, yes, do we it, follow do your procedure, but we need to go to Thibaut Dumont in France because uh, he's yes, on his yes, way. Yes, 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 yes. You know. Right. Talk to you yes, later. Bye-bye. Thibaut. Bonjour. Yes. Bonjour. So I show you the situation. At the otoscopy, you can see that there is a reinforced tympanic membrane with a little central perforation. We decided with the patient yesterday to keep the perforation, not to close it in order to prevent any otitis serous media after the surgery. And in the mastoid, there is normally uh, the residual cholesteatoma. It looks at this stage more than uh, like uh, cholesterol granuloma, but we will see. And I just see you, show you, into the middle here, there is a partial prosthesis, a titanium partial prosthesis that I will remove now. The 
tympanic membrane is reinforced with cartilage up and I turn the stay piece to elevate petit crochet the, the clip of the prosthesis from the stay piece And the advantage with such prosthesis is it is much less dangerous to remove a prosthesis like that than a, an autograft which would be fixed to the stay piece. So I remove the prosthesis and then I will clear the mastoid. Alors, là, il me donne une aspiration 15. Et le plester. I will try to elevate uh, that at the maximum without opening it, but I cannot remove it in one part without opening it. It's really too big. And so I will first elevate part of it, and then I re remove the bigger part. You can see here infected cholesteatoma. On va faire un prélèvement. Vous avez une, une petite cuillère. Euh, allez, plus gros. Allez. That fits in with what we saw on your scan. Please. Yes. So it matches what we saw on your diffusion weighted MRI scan. Voilà, very big residual cholesterol for mass, aspiration 1. Then, uh, perform a canal wall up mastoidectomy to remove everything. That's right. There is an erosion of the auditory canal, which was reconstructed with some cartilage, erosion. You can see here the erosion of the auditory canal. Voilà. Alors, on va enlever tout ça. Passera tout. Et on va prendre la grosse fraise coupante avec l'aspiration 30. That's looking great. We're just going to leave you briefly to go to India and we'll okay. be back shortly. See you in a bit. Allez, vous dégagez tout ça. Aspiration. Hello, India. Hi, India. You're back on screen. So I've, I've done a posture deprotonic. Lovely. And uh, yeah. uh, as Raghu said, it's very Okay, 
Okay, fine, sir. Thanks, Mohan. We're going to come back to you shortly. We'll keep an eye on what you're doing. We're going to head over to Hanover to see uh, Dr. Willenborg. Yeah. Hello, Kirsten. Can you hear us? I think you're with another case. Hello, Kirsten. Uh, hello, hello. So we already inserted uh, the electrode. Uh, it's a 66-year-old woman with a profound uh, hearing loss on both sides with just residual hearing and the low frequencies. Uh, and we inserted the um, AB Slim J electrode and we measured uh, during insertion. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can show you the potential um, we measured. And w it was nearly the same uh, before and after insertion. Um, Maybe you can get some declarations. The CT scan was uh, normal, uh, mm. just a high jugular bulb, and MRI scan was normal, so just normal findings and a normal anatomy. Uh, I can show you. Can I my Schere bitte bekommen? Am I Schere? The facial recess was narrow, and uh, rerouting of the uh, corda was necessary but everything went well. Um, and Kirsten, what, what makes you decide for the type of implant? What's your consideration? Uh, we, we uh, she was a hearing aid, uh, a phonak hearing aid, so she decided for AB. Um, können wir das Mikroskop einmal einblenden? Und das ist der 1.0 einmal bitte. So you can see the posterior tympanotomy and the inserted electrode. Uh -huh. We closed the round window with uh, fresh token blood uh, and we fixed the electrode in a, a slit and the uh, um, facial quarter recess. Uh -huh. uh, measurement was okay, and maybe you can see the measurement. Können wir einmal umschalten, bitte? Könnt ihr einmal erklären jetzt, bitte? Yeah. So I'm sorry we didn't see more of your surgery. We, we do see the, uh, in the screen, the response. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, now you can see, yeah. yeah. We don't have the audio of the uh, we don't have the audio of the technician. Yeah. Can we einmal umstellen, bitte? Can we the microscope? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so on this screen, you can see uh, the aim system of the manufacturer Advanced Bionics, and on this line, so this is uh, the responses of the cochlear microphonics uh, during the in, uh, insertion, and so. On the left side was the beginning of the insertion, and when we go to the right side, you can see the responses go higher. And yes, so we would say in this case it's uh, over the no noise flow uh, fl floor, and so we would say, yeah, there's the response. Uh -huh. So this is uh, uh, the measurement during the implantation, and uh, you can make some measurements um, after the implantation, and you can see it on this screen. Uh, it's like an audiogram, and you can see you have responses by 500 hertz and 750, seven, uh, yeah. 750 hertz. And yeah, it looks like a normal audiogram. 
and on the uh, third screen you have uh, the measurements over all okay. frequencies that we measured and the response on every electrode from apical to baza. Okay, good. Okay, thank you very much. Kirsten, was this your last surgery for Lion or do you have still another patient to go? No, what was my last oh, operation nice. today? I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, we hope to see you next time. <laughs> Yes, okay. Okay, thank you very Have much. Fun. Yes. Bye okay, bye. Yeah. bye, -bye. I, I think we need to go to uh, France for a moment to, to Thibault Dumont. Uh, uh, let me see. Hello? Hello, Thibault. We're back with you. Sorry. Okay, so I am removing the cholesterol from the master head and I remove the, the bigger part and to avoid to. Uh, let some residual cholesteratoma. I skeletonize uh, the tegmen, uh, the lateral sinus, and I will progressively go from posterior to the anterior attic to remove all the cholesteratoma. The, the CT show that there is no erosion of the labyrinth. So in principle, no, no risk of turbulent fistula. And I just have to progressively follow all the, the limits. Okay, so we're back with Hanover. Um, Professor Lennart, are you repairing your I'm canal right. wall with some cartilage by the look of things? Yeah, well, just I repair here, you see, because we have this defect, so I did cut yeah. uh, slices or sliced this uh, cartilage, just to see it's covered now. Uh -huh. uh, so that we don't get here retraction or any defect of the skin and then some consequ uh, subsequent cholesteratoma formation. Eh? That's nice. So and that's where did you, where did you uh, take the cartilage yeah? from? Um, yeah, it was just Dragel, no? Dragel cartilage. Dragel cartilage, lovely. And uh, Dragel cartilage, which I think is the easiest and the best to use. Uh, I don't use uh, much the, uh, ca the carbum. Yeah. Conche, you see here just my incision mm -hmm. from the yeah. from the Dragels. No? And that's, nice. I think, the easiest way to do it, no? And it's very thin Okay, so we we'll close. Uh, th uh, Thomas, it's very yeah, thin Yeah, yeah, it's 0.3. So you use oh, three the, uh, of, of five. The, cord, the cords cutter, or did, did you do it by hand? The cords, yeah, yeah. Okay. The cords one is the, the, the one we have in use. We had another one for, uh, uh, for the French one, but it didn't, it didn't work uh, well. Um, I mean, initially, yes, but after some uses, it was not really slicing anymore. Uh, can can so you we show us? Because I know Coach makes two ones, but I think this is the manual one, isn't it? Can we gerade mal das manual? Das eine nur den Knorpelschneider haben Sie noch oder? Ja, okay. Is still there? Yeah, ja, will zeigen, dass wir ihn zeigen können. Er ja, macht nichts. Ja, yeah, Dann machen wir mal zusammen. So you see here two pieces. We sorry. Ah, you see here how it, how it looks like. Switch the microscope. So you yeah, see. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's. Uh, I love it. And then what you can do is just to put in, they have different plates. We have, I think, um, yeah. point 0.2, uh, point 0.3. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so you have now 0 0.3, or point whatever. And yeah. then we can basically put it in here. No? Then you put in your cartilage. And then you just close this. So it's kind of pressed. Yeah. And then let's see the simple one. And then. Um, Linda has uh, just prepared uh, and let me check, then you can just slice it down, eh? can like I see this. The knife? So then it cuts it, uh, in yeah. and then you open it, we have then two, two halves, or say, uh -huh. um, two slices. No? Oh, that's, and uh, how thick it is, is de determined by the thickness here of your, of this was 0.2 now. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and you can combine, of course, no, if you want. I um, love, I love okay, that. So that's it's, it's very good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's very nice. It's very nice. Huh? Yeah, I and also like this device. So yeah. Although I, I also taught myself to slice oh. cartilage by hand after watching YouTube videos of Robert <laughs> Vincent doing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, th thank well. you. So, Thomas, you're going to close. So we can... Uh, thank Maybe you very close much. Now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, do, you have, do you have more surgeries today or is this it for you today? Yeah, we have, we have, uh, well, I'm not, but uh, I think Rolf Salcher will step in and uh, Nils Brenzler. Okay. They, will, uh, they will do some, uh, two more uh, cochlear implants then, okay. different uh, approaches, 
child uh, with a nucleus device and we have another one Rolf will demonstrate here in preservation um, with um, uh, then also a monitoring and uh, I think fluoroscopy no? okay thank you thank you very much okay and, so uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll meet uh, soon <laughs> and have good travels to the States tomorrow. Thank yeah, you. yeah, in, uh, latest in, latest in, uh, in France, no? Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Take care, we'll go. Thank you. Okay, thanks, bye. bye. Uh, we really would like to go to France, but we see we have some bandwidth issues, so we have to go to India then, I think. I would uh, I'll ask the director here if she agrees if we go to India. Yeah, let's go to India. Because we have we have some um, the, the the internet is not working well to France unfortunately. Okay, uh, Mohan, we're back with you. Yes, uh, thank you. We are uh, making the bed now for the receiver simulator. Um, I'm going to uh, have a tie down bone. So I like to fix my implant. Um, so I'm just. Uh, Making the well as deep as I can, almost down to the level of the dura. A lot of diplo, as one would expect in a, in a small child. And it's important to control the bleeding of all these diploic vessels. Lovely. We'll come back to Busy because I can see they are now back online. Okay, Busy, we're back with you. Hello? Hello. Hello. You're back on screen. So, uh, I remove uh, the, macroscopy, the macroscopical part of the cholesterol. You can see here a large canal wall up mastoidectomy with a short um, posterior tympanotomy. And I have to drill with a daimonder or the mastoid and the anterior attic to prevent residual cholesterol. I will enlarge a little bit the uh, posterior tympanotomy to check uh, the stapes with a mixed approach from the auditory canal and the mastoid. Okay. And then I will perform the mastoid obliteration with uh, bone substitute, uh, the glass bone uh, up front. And so at this stage, I am performing the diamond bone drilling of all the mastoid and attic. And the key point is always the anterior attic. It is the more difficult area to expose, and because of that, the more frequent uh, site of residual cholesterol. In my series in adults, residual, the rate of residual cholesterol is 3.5%, and I, I hope I, I will decrease it with the obliteration. So I drill the, on the lateral semicircular canal, just behind it, just above, until I see no more mucosa remnants, if possible. Okay, Bezier, your image is frozen up again, so I'm just going to pop back to India, who are still... Okay. And we'll come back, we'll come Alors, back to you. Une plus long. Okay. 
de l'eau, c'est pas arrosé où il faut là. Vers le nez. Voilà. et petit rosen Inspiration 12. Alors, je vais me donner euh, un sport sur dessous et qui rejoint en attendant ok busy you're looking good and you're back online with a good video again now Hi Bezier, you're back online now. Your video cut out for a bit, but you seem to be back now. Okay, so uh, I will just enlarge a little bit the process of the to me to uh, check the status. The removal of the cholesterol is quite... And I just have to finish to clear the retro tympanum there. The tyrosine. Up. And here is the facial nerve there. 
and I will check the stapes with mixed apports from behind like that and from the auditory canal. I go very carefully. Malade vers moi et aspiration 10. You can see here the erosion of the auditory canal. Alors, and I have to check the stapy through the auditory canal. Petit crochet. There is some fibrous tissues on the stapy's head. And I have to expose it a little bit better to clean it. bien monté, aspiration 15. Aspiration 10 et petit crochet. So I will use a partial processes by Medel, but I have to clean first the stapes. So now I begin to see the step is head there. en avant. I, I will check there. Stop through the... You've frozen up again, Bézier, so I'm just going to head back to India and we'll come back to you once your video's popped back into action. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. So, uh, we are now ready to uh, have a round window just about to see the round window membrane there. Yeah, so we can we see it. That's lovely. Is that a skeeter drill you use to widen the round window niche? No, that's the niche. I just made a small pocket and actually see the So now we have to insert the implant in an anthro inferior direction. The 
reflex of regular This side doesn't have any uh, hearing. <laughs> the function is probably too small. Give me a big thing. Go very very slowly. This is the temptation to charge it. the electrodes are in now. but then we put all the electrodes in and I'll just stop there stop the shift I have already made a channel for my electrode here. Yeah, you can see a small little, this is to 
stabilize the electrode there. There's one way of fixing it so that there's no movement or migration. I like to tuck it into the additives like that so that it stays snug. And then I just cover this all up with a bit of bone padding. So that uh, Forms a nice uh, cover for it, a bony tunnel as it were, gives additional protection to the electrode. So that's us. One of us complete now. So I just put back the fiber flap now, and then um, we'll go for the testing, the electrophysiology testing. Yeah, we probably ought to. That's great. Thank you. We're going to head back to Bézier. We'll see, see you in a bit. We'll see if we can come and see your testing. Aspiration 15. So, I'm harvesting some trigger cartilage to uh, reconstruct uh, the middle ear. So, I just have at this stage to perform hemostasis, boucher. I will use, use the pericondrium of the trach. It's your bandwidth, I'm afraid, Thibaut. We had the same problem with Robert yesterday. Thibaut, I'm afraid your picture is frozen again. Um, I'm sorry, but it seems to be keeping happening. Just... Oh. We'll just watch for a little bit longer and see if it clears. Okay. I will show you how I prepare the cartilage. I don't use cartilage slicers because I prefer to thin the cartilage by hand in order to curve it as I want uh, by thinning it in a differential way on uh, one side and one first I will remove the perichondrium of, of both faces of the cartilage and I will press it and keep it to close the attic and the uh, posterior tympanotomy. Yeah, we can see your cartilage very nicely. You've got a good video right now. Thank you. is very sticky up voilà. a bisturi lam rose The, the press yeah. and so I will press the perichondrium in order to history yeah. to thin it and to dry it Press it very hard. And then when I will reopen the press, you can see that the perichon room is larger and thinner. I will you make it a second time, press it a second time, and let it dry. OK, 
Okay, and now I will let it dry on the Teflon plate. You can see that it makes a very large piece up. And so on the Teflon plate, it will not stick. Carter. So I will now wash aspiration 15, prepare the tympanic membrane reconstruction, and after perform the obliteration. Them. So, here is the remaining tympanic membrane with the central perforation that I, I will keep to uh, aerate the middle ear. And I have to reconstruct, in fact, petit crochet, the attic wall there. Well, there is some gap between the tympanic membrane and the, the attic wall. And to reconstruct the posterior uh, part of the auditory canal. So I will prepare the cartilage for that. I will use a trago cartilage. And first, I will check smooth, the size and the shape of the cartilage. Oui. And so I can see that it will be large enough to close the posterior wall of the auditory canal, um, but not enough to do it uh, perhaps in one piece. I will see. Perhaps I, I can use it just in one piece. So I want to thin it and to curve it. I will use it uh, superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. So first step, I will curve it anterior posteriorly by thinning, thinning the, poster, the posterior face, up, which will be applied on the auditory canal wall. Oui. Then on this side, I will send it to avoid that it curves too much. So for that, I thin on this face. Voila. And the same for the upper part. And I will check again how it looks. Up. So I think it will be okay like that to uh, re 
reconstruct the Arctic wall and the posterior auditory canal wall in the same poussez-vous in the same piece with the same piece and so I need to cover it and so I have no transmus no temporalis fascia uh, I have to harvest some fibrous tissue that I will use to cover the cartilage for construction so on the posterior flap the posterior flap is very thick and so I can harvest some fibrous tissue from this flap to cover the cartilage that's a grief l'autre l'autre tenez tenez le pavillon en même temps So I will harvest some fibrous tissue from the thickness of the posterior flap and I will also press it to thin it before to use it. Voilà. Qu'est-ce que c'est ce bruit d'aspiration qu'on entend C'est l'aspi d'anesthésiste. Il faudrait l'arrêter si c'est ça. And so I will press the fibrous tissue. And so I will have now two uh, soft tissue available, uh, the perichondrium and uh, this fibrous tissue. I can check, no, no, this is their size. And so I think that I will use the perichondrium, which is there to cover the reconstruction of the tympanic membrane and um, auditory canal and I will use this fibrous tissue to close the attic and the posterior tympanotomy for the obliteration of the mastoid. Malade en avant. Allez. So, to perform the obliteration, I have to close the attic in order to prevent lavage moi-même, migration of the bone substitute into the middle ear, lavage, and, and I will use the fibrous tissue that I have harvested for that. Voilà, aspiration 15. First, the fibrous tissue in the micro pince and the tissue mi. On donnerait ensuite la, la pointe mousse. Hop. So I put it to close the attic. 
and the posterior temporotomy, point mousse. And I have to check from the auditory canal if it is OK. Hi, India, we're back with you. Have you got some measurements to show us? Hello, India. Can you hear us? Um. Hello, uh, Arno. We're with you. A little bit. Can you okay, share? hello. Welcome again. Hi. Okay. Uh, I will show you the CT or the CBCT from the case yesterday. It was a six, it was a straight array from cochlear 622, and it was uh, a five year old child with progressive sensory neuro hearing loss. And also for children, we uh, find that imaging is quite important in order to have a documentation of how the uh, electrode was uh, inserted in the first place, because they have uh, this implant for the next 20 years or so, or 30 years even. And in case there is any issues, it's very important that you know how the electrode was placed during uh, primary surgery. And uh, therefore, we try to take uh, CBCTs from every of our patients. And here we see that the electrode is uh, a bit over 360 degrees uh, inserted. and. Uh, as we learned from Professor Lennartz today, that uh, uh, in, in, in large, large uh, patient samples, we see some benefits uh, if the electrode would be a bit deeper. Uh, but in, in children, uh, they really can cope very well with also shorter electrodes. And, and on the individual basis, uh, I'm not quite sure whether we see any, any uh, meaningful uh, differences uh, in uh, even if we would be a bit deeper. But, but definitely for, for adult patients, we see that, that they develop uh, faster uh, if, if they have a bit longer electrode because the, the, there's the issue of pitch matching, which is would would be better if if we uh, let's say would have an insertion depth of uh, one and a half turn. So this is just uh, a reminder of of yesterday's surgery. Very, very interesting. I, I loved the, the topic of pitch match, matching, but maybe not for over the internet. But something to do, fun to talk about. Uh, I don't know. Something very interesting has intrigued me a lot, a lot of uh, time. Uh, the pitch matching experiments that we did in the past. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I I think this is uh, it's it's also uh, clinically important. I think it's not just you know an academic question. No, I I think if you don't, I mean I I think well it's from a research source uh, point of view. I I don't want to uh, claim that it has clinical value. I wouldn't be able to say so. But from a theory, you why would you expect the brain to reprogram if you cannot pitch match it? Huh? I mean, if you are able to pitch match more correctly, the brain has less reprocessing and re less less plasticity to depend on to get an optimal result. 
And uh, to, to that yeah. extent, I think the pitch match, matching that we did in single-sided deafness, uh, I mean, it's absolutely not tailored yet. Our experience was that the, ma the, the, the standard mapping was not in line with what we achieved in our surgeries. Yeah, I concur with that. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm uh, aware of 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 uh, this study too you just referred to, and uh, and for single-sided deafness, uh, we definitely uh, want uh, deeper insertions. Yeah, because this 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 also uh, is easier for the patient to get accustomed to the uh, uh, CI hearing. On, on one side. Right, to combine the both. Because it's amazing, we did find uh, central uh, processing like squelch effect. People are able to develop squelch effect. <laughs> it's crazy. It's uh, normal hearing ear, uh, implanted ear, and still they can have central processing benefits. It's crazy. But they do. It's the brain that is the miracle. Yeah. Right. I concur with that. Okay, the patient uh, right now under. Uh, Surgery is a 70, 70 year, 70 years, 77 years old. Yeah, uh, a gentleman with a uh, basically a deaf ear on on the left side, and uh, he has some benefits of the hearing aid on the right side, but uh, but he's uh, not not performing very well with a with a hearing aid. So, uh, and we go now for for a. a cochlear implantation in, in, in the left ear. And we have uh, measured the cochlear length and uh, uh, then calculated that uh, Medalflex 26 would uh, provide us with an, a one and a half turn insertion depth, depth uh, when fully inserted. And uh, he has a bit problems with his uh, neck. He cannot uh, move his head very, very much. So uh, I think the uh, the exoscope is very feasible mm -hmm. uh, in that respect because we can come from very different angles. Okay, uh, very, very good. We do need to run uh, some ads in the meantime. We will monitor okay. your uh, your video stream uh, carefully. We'll be with you in a minute uh, whenever we need. But we do need to do some uh, advertisement because this yeah, would not be possible with, without support of the, Im the companies that uh, have helped us uh, so gracefully in the, in the, uh, in the past, uh, past period. Um, so we'll be with you uh, shortly. Otoplan is a revolutionary tablet-based otological planning software. Quickly and easily import DICOM files from PACs or USB drives. Intuitive controls makes it easy to master Otoplan's advanced features. Otoplan's guided workflow simplifies 3D modeling and surgical planning. Easily create 3D reconstructions of otological structures, including facial nerve, corda tympani, and more. Otoplan lets you see exactly where you are going before you make the first cut. Otoplan makes it easy to achieve an ideal view of the cochlea and make consistent measurements. Choose the ideal electrode array for each patient for best hearing outcomes. The electrode visualization tool uses patient-specific data to show insertion depth and covered frequency of each electrode contact. Otoplan makes it easy to discuss the ideal electrode choice and surgical considerations with your patients.
one-step export feature automatically generates a full case report in PDF or PowerPoint format. Autoplan's post-op analysis feature makes it simple to perform a quality check and verify insertion status from post-operative images. Since Graham's encounter with a seashell on a blade of grass in the 1970s and the inspiring discovery that brought the first multi-channel cochlear implant, the cochlear story has evolved from an ambitious endeavour to a life-changing partner on the journey back to hearing. Our people are driven by this same dedication today and have helped transform hundreds of thousands of lives. This shared drive to do life-changing work is inspired and influenced strongly by our beginnings, while being motivated by the energy of our people today and everyone we partner with, and always guided by a clear, simple truth. That our position to connect people to a life lived with hearing is nothing short of a privilege. So we'll keep listening and responding to bring implantable hearing within the reach of those who need it.
Tom. Hallo Thibaut. Hi Bezier, can you hear us? We're back in the studio with you. Hello. Hello. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so I will show you the the mastery obliteration with uh, your glass. Okay. I closed pants mousse, the attic and the posterior pants mousse, posterior tympanotomy with uh, the perichondrium with the fibrous tissues that you can see here, yeah. and I will I will now perform the obliteration. You can see that once mixed with the blood, the blue, the blue gas, oui, the bioglass become current or then, and so I can split it in little pieces to close the anterior attic first. And I will check through the auditory canal that there is no fluster. Prominence of the auditory is as close to the natural hearing that I've ever yeah. come across. And for I can figure, okay. it's not. I am at the level of the article. Voilà. Grand Rosen. And I progressively obliterate in order to have no empty space. And I will cover the obliteration on the auditory canal wall on the side of the auditory canal. This obliteration material is very well tolerated. The post-operative is usually very simple with no inflammatory reaction. I give to the patient uh, oral antibiotics for five days after the surgery. And I add uh, one case only of infection of the obliteration. In one case, that it was my fault because I performed it on a ear which, which was very infected. And so, I hope if the ear is very infected, then there is no indication for the obliteration. Encore. And so, once the obliteration is in place, I will perform the tympanoplasty and the ossicoloplasty. Okay, that's okay for the obliteration. Malade vers moi. You can see here the defect into the auditory canal that I will cover with cartilage. Stop. Donnez-moi un peu de bioglass avec le plester. I will add a little bit more bioglass there. Now 
not too much. And so I will perform now the osiculoplasty. I will use a partial processes, a titanium partial processes by Medel. I measured and Malade Vermois. In that case, I will use a 1.5 stop millimeter processes. Aspiration 12 et plaster. I can see here the, the step is head. Alors, aspiration 10, c'est la prothèse. La prothèse. You can see here the metal prosthesis. It is a titanium prosthesis with a clip uh, for the stapes head. And so I will glue, insert it on the stapes head. I will just the prosthesis on the stapes head with the suction tube and then push progressively with a uh, hook after okay okay then the process is in place on the stapes and I We'll put the cartilage, the reinforced tympanic membrane face, petit crochet, aspiration 12. And then I will put the cartilage for the article and the auditory canal. Petit crochet. Okay, and I will cover the cartilage with perichondrium. Voilà. voilà, pointe mousse. Non. Oui. So I will apply the cartilage and the tympanic membrane 
with the dressing of the auditory canal, la bande. Pointe mousse. Vous allez me donner le carbone au sel. Voilà. Alors, pointe mousse pour moi. Il a touché ça, c'est pas bien. Pointe les gouttes. Sur le conduit. Okay. Voilà, stop. Ok, and now I can reapply the, audit, the skin of the auditory canal. You can see there the obliteration. Do you have uh, any question? Passe morcurette. Hop, voilà. Et donc, vous allez pouvoir euh, appeler le suivant. le suivant. Ok, that's ok for this case. mettre l'image de champ euh... company adverts um, because we haven't yet and uh, that's quite important We'll come back to you. The Ponto 4 is as close to the natural hearing that I've ever come across. And for what I can figure, it's 90 to 95% of what my left ear is. And that is more than I ever expected. I was happy to hear. Now you've given me in a completely different world with the Ponto 4. It's self-adjusting and audio-adjusting the volume and the noises around me, but it's not noise. It's sound and you're directional and you're finding your space again. It's like going from no walking to I'm walking instantaneously. It's that much of a shift. So I can't walk, but now I can run. Welcome to the Luminous presentation. My name is Simon Smith and the Europe, Middle East and Africa brand manager for the Head and Neck division. I'm going to be taking 10 minutes of your time this morning to take you through our company and our CO2 solutions, including the Otterlays, which you've seen in action in this morning's case. So I'll start by talking to you about who Luminous are as a company and the system that was used in the case this morning. And following that, I'll walk you through the system components, the technologies we have before finally moving on to the otology specific solution that we have in the Otolase. So who are Luminous as a company? Luminous are the world's largest medical laser company. We are a global developer, manufacturer and distributor of laser and light based devices for surgical aesthetic and ophthalmic applications. We have over 900 employees as a company and a global distribution network that operates across our various business surgical and aesthetic units. We have 265 patents and have 260 plus FDA clearances with a global install base of 80,000 plus. In addition, we have a presence in over 80 countries across the world. 
So let's start by talking about the CO2 laser system that was used in today's surgery. The system itself has two main modes of operation, utilising free beam and fibre-based technologies. In the free beam, the energy is delivered through the articulated arm in conjunction with the operating microscope or the handpieces. When using the operating microscope, there's a choice of three Acuspot micro manipulators, and that depends on the model of operating microscope that you're using in surgery. The Surgitux scanner is used in conjunction with the digital Acublade or the DAB, a semi-robotic linear cutting within the larynx or the airway. The CO2 fiber-based technology provides the precision of the CO2 laser energy, but overcomes the line of sight problem when using a surgical operating microscope. And I'll come on to a little bit more about that shortly. The fiber lays can be used deeper within the airway and easily within the oral cavity. The otolase is used specifically for otology surgery. The Acupulse Duo itself has application uses in otolaryngology, maxfax, plastics, gynecology, and also thoracics. It's an upgradable platform. For example, it can be used in aesthetic applications. As you can see from the bottom of the screen, we have a wide range of CO2 laser accessories. So let's focus on the Surgitouch scanner and the digital Acublade. The Surgitouch provides produces shapes from the energy which is provided by the Acupulse Duo. And it can be used with hand pieces to produce circles for ablation. It can also be used with the Acuspot with the digital Acublade, the DAB. It produces lines or curves for cutting. And the scanning micro manipulator is able to produce unprecedented precision and reprodu reproducible results for the surgeon. So when the surgical objective is to treat the pathology with the maximum possible control, while minimizing adjacent healthy tissue damage, and also preserving organ functionality, the DAB micro manipulator is an indispensable tool to precisely incise, excise, or ablate the tissue. What does that mean for the patient? It actually reduces the risk of complications and increases the patient's quality of life. An example at the bottom of the screen there is the different modes, for example, cir circular ablation, linear and curved incisions, and also ablation. Let's focus a little on the depth of penetration. So the CO2 laser has the smallest zone of thermal spread in comparison with all other energy-based devices. So in theory, the depth of tissue penetration for the CO2 is only 0.1 millimeters. For a surgeon, that means unprecedented precision and the ability to operate near really critical structures and delicate anatomy, such as those in otology cases. So let's summarize the digital Acublade, but it's virtually char-free laser delivery, which ensures clean excisional margins and has reproducible tissue effect. And the system has preset parameters customized to the treated tissue and patient's anatomy. As I mentioned before, the system is compatible with all the leading surgical microscopes. It also gives the surgeon maximum control as his incision shape, length and depth and orientation are easily adjusted by the surgeon. The Surgitouch scanning movement may reduce the procedure time when compared with conventional CO2 laser microsurgery. And finally, minimal heat buildup in tissue equates to accelerated healing time. So for the patient, fewer post-operative complications. So I mentioned before that I would el elaborate further on the line of sight problem. So with the traditional CO2 laser microsurgery setup, the laser can really only be fired in a straight line and usually that's around 400 millimeters. So if the targeted tissue is not in the line of sight of the operating microscope, it's going to be impossible to treat that with the CO2 laser. For example, in the lower airway tract or the pharynx. For that reason, Luminous launched the fiber-based technologies 
for the CO2 a few years ago, for example, the fibre layers. This can be used either through the dedicated hand pieces or through the working channel of an existing flexible scope with the endoscopic protection sheath, such as the bronchoscope or the transnasal esophageal scope. The fibre layers comes in two options, the single use or the multi-use fibre, which is called the Endure. The Otolase is a fibre delivery system to perform ear surgery cases, such as a stapedectomy, cholesteatoma, and also adhesions. Finally, in the bottom right of the screen, we see the dropping guide, which enables the fibre lays to be used with the Da Vinci robot. So let's move on to the Otolase. So we know that the goal for middle ear surgery is the restoration of sound conduction in the middle ear. What are some of the risks associated with middle ear surgery? Excessive sounds, vibrations or heat during the surgery can cause temporary or permanent adverse conditions. For example, facial nerve damage, hearing loss, tinnitus, vertigo or nausea. With the Otolase, we have three different system components. We have the fibre, which can be used up to 24 times. We have two reusable handpiece options and two single-use tip options. In addition, we have an improved fibre drape. So moving back to the handpieces, they're ergonomically designed, they're thin, they include a grasping mechanism, they're easy to manoeuvre and hold, and will facilitate clear sight visualization for the surgeon. There's a, a selection of two single use tips, which are either straight or they're curved. Both of these options are highly durable and facilitate reliable energy transmission. So the total working distance would be the combined length of the handpiece, the shaft and the tip, which will allow adequate operation with the selected microscope. So on the left of the screen is an example of a complete starter kit, which includes a box of 12 curved tips, 12 straight tips, a straight handpiece, curved handpiece, which is a complete starter kit. So here's an example of the complete assembly of the Otolase kit. So firstly, we have the fiber, which is the piece that connects into the system, which is either the acupulse duo or the ultrapulse duo. Covering that fiber, we have the sterile drape. And the fiber is connected to the handpiece, either the straight or the curved handpiece. Finally, to complete the assembly, the tips are connected, the straight or the curved tips are connected to the handpiece. So what are some of the clinical benefits overall of the Otolase system? Well, the Otolase supports delivery of an efficient procedure, therefore enhancing safe middle ear surgery. We have precise and controlled layer by layer removal of the diseased tissue. And for the patient, there's less chance of vestibular injury. Overall, the non-contact non nature of the system minimizes the possibility for any inadvertent trauma to the adjacent structures. So thank you for watching the Luminous presentation. Please go to www.lionweb.org and search for the Luminous booth where you'll be able to click on the screens to register your interest in any of the Luminous products that you've seen here or indeed to receive further information on any of our products overall. Thank Hello, Mauri, tässä. Hi, Arno, oh, no. we've got you back on, back on screen now. Well, welcome back. Hello. Hi. Mitäs te nyt teitte? So, uh, sorry, we are uh, having some technical problems, but they are resolved. Okay, so uh, 
In the meanwhile, I was uh, opening the facial recess and preparing the round window area here. And uh, it's not uh, done yet. We have an, still some overhang here, which I will drill away. This, uh, for hearing preservation cases, this is something uh, uh, sometimes uh, a bit tough to do because you definitely want to uh, keep the membrane intact. Here in this case, we have some, some scar issues on, on the membrane, which I try to take away very carefully. As you see, uh, we have here some movement. Uh, so the patient is under local anesthesia. This was something I forgot to uh, tell you in my introduction. And uh, here we have, we see the round window, but there's still some uh, preparation to do, which I will do with a trill. In this case, I, I use a one millimeter trill. Uh, you can also use a 1.5 or something like that. I have now uh, used this one because at first glance it appears that that the front window area was a bit uh, uh, narrow. So the irrigation fluid could be a bit less. I have too much irrigation right now. And now you see that the round window is, uh, is evolving here. And now I have to be careful because the patient is a bit moving his head. But, but now we have a nice look at the round window, as you see here. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it really nicely. Here, yeah. yeah, it's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So I, I'm in favor of exposing the round window as much as possible because this will give me much more control over the insertion, which is also uh, beneficial uh, in case of hearing preservation. So the round window is usually extending uh, below the facial nerve, but in this case we have a quite nice view and we also can again adjust the angle a bit. In, in this case, for example, I will use my uh, right hand for the insertion. And here you can see now again the ben benefit of, of the uh, exoscope that you can have a nice nice look as, at a different angle and now your your uh, hands are not coming in your way because you're looking from from a quite different angle so this will be my trajectory uh, for insertion the electrode uh, still I have here a bit of overhang but that's that will not make pose any problems now you can check for the round window reflex if you want. I, I don't think it's necessary, but it's always nice to see. In this case, uh, the patient is totally deaf, so you can do it. As you see, he is reacting also a bit. This is not, uh, for him, this is not very, uh, very comfortable. And, uh, Sometimes when you are inserting, you are seeing also a stapedial reflex. This is very uh, strange, but that has perhaps something to do when the electrode is touching the basilar membrane or something, then you can elicit a uh, stapedial reflex. But the patient actually is not uh, experiencing uh, anything uh, uncomfortable during the insertion of the electrode. So sometimes they can, even deaf ears can uh, experience a dexamethasone, uh, some kind of uh, sensations, uh, noise sensation. Okay, I will put a bit dexamethasone 
onto the round window for the time I drill the implant bed. And, uh, and then we are ready for, for insertion after that. Fantastic. We're going to pop yeah, we briefly have... back. We're going to pop briefly back over to Hanover, and we'll try and come back to you for your insertion. So we'll see you in a bit. Yes, Fred. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it, uh, Hello. Hello. Hello, Hanover. Hello. Can you hear me good? We can hear you really good, and you're back on screen. Welcome back. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon from uh, Hanover again. Um, uh, we are going to present a case now of an eight-year-old child that um, had a progressive hearing loss on both sides. It was uh, documented since 2018. Now, as you see the audiographs here, she's uh, almost deaf. And uh, now she came to our center uh, two months ago to ask for a cochlear implant. And we did all the examinations, error, etc., and she, yeah. So she's deaf, and um, on the down right side, you see the CT scans. We have a cochlear length of um, 36.1 millimeters on the right side, and approximately the same on the left side. You see here how we um, measure the cochlear length. My colleague, uh, Dr. Max Tim, uh, did that by himself. And due to the cochlear length of that patient and the audiograph, we go for a, a nucleus 622. We call it nucleus SRA. Um, it's the 622 device from cochlear. And um, I will show you later. It has two markers. One is 20 millimeters, which we use for um, cases with short cochlear or residual hearing. But in that case, um, we decided uh, to go for a 25 millimeters uh, insertion um, to achieve a good cochlear coverage and um, this would be the first white marker that I will uh, put into the round window um, later. So next slide please. Here you see um, quite beautiful MRI scan of that patient. You see the nerves, you see the um, fluid filled vestibular and cochlear system in the T2 sequences. Next one please. So this is parasagittal slices in the inner ear canal. Our department for neuroradiology neuro does this quite nicely. And uh, we <laughs> explicitly wanted to show this uh, picture here because you see the smiley formation. Um, this is the smiley on the right side. Now that's his left side now. And you see the seven up, coke down, and the two vestibular nerves quite nicely in that patient. So we see... Uh, beautiful nervous structures, so she should be fine with the cochlear implant. Here you see axial sections of the CT scans. So there's a very highly and well pneumatized uh, mastoid bone here with a very thin cortical bone. Um, I experienced that already as I started the surgery a couple minutes ago. So this is corona slices and we see a round window niche a little bit nicer on the left side than on the right side. Next please. Okay, so that's all the pictures that we wanted to show you. And now we can um, go to the macro camera. They're lovely images. Thank you for that. And can you zoom in a little? Any questions so far regarding that case? So it's bilateral, okay? We start on the right side. And um, I don't know if you want to broadcast both sides, but uh, we start with the right side and afterwards we do the left side in one surgery. Um, so this is the ear already flapped anteriorly. And here I um, had the dummy from the um, nucleus and um, I painted where the coil should be in the end. We center a little. <laughs> okay. Müssen wir ein bisschen mehr in die Mitte? Okay, a little more centered. And then I made the skin incision, and um, we here in Hanover we perform a fish flap. Um, so we cut on the temporal line down here to the mastoid cavity, uh, to the mastoid tip, and then um, we push 
the so-called fish flap in front, and here you have the in front you have the outer ear canal. I think you've seen it differently from Professor Müller this morning. He made a he made a cut uh, right at the border to the outer ear canal, but here in Hanover we do the classic fish flap. So as I told you earlier, um, sauger mal bitte. That patient is very well pneumatized and um, can I raspa maham? And when I removed the flap, the periosteum from the um, mastoid plane, I already removed some of the corticalis with the raspa. Um, so that here I also already see mastoid cells. Here in Hanover, we use the Medtronic Indigo system for our CI surgery. And um, I start with quite a big cutting burr. It's a 5.5 millimeter burr. And now I start with a classic mastectomy. I try not to make the mastectomy too big because we want to have a uh, remnant um, cortical bone to cover the cable of the, of the cochlear implant. Zuspielen, bitte. Können wir lauter machen? Ich verstehe nicht, falls Sie was sagen. Danke. Um, I just see that I should use the microscope. I'm a brille up, bitte. I should use the microscope, then you see it much better than with the macro camera. As I said, that patient is very, very well pneumatized. So, nur die Brille. Super, danke. Brauche ich später nochmal. Um, that patient is very, patient is very well pneumatized. So I already see the um, sigmoid sinus. Yeah, that's a, that's a lovely image with your microscope. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry, Mr. Sauerzan. Okay, and that's the familiar page, picture that you have seen from us before with the ARI microscope. So you see the very nice pneumatization, and here in the depth, um, bluish, it's already the, the sigmoid sinus. She has very, very thin cortical bones, so um, I'm quite careful that I don't put any pressure with the cutting burr, because I can easily damage the posterior wall of the outer ear canal or um, the tegment to the dura. And that's what I showed you before here. I opened the mastoid already with the raspa that I actually didn't want. Um, usually I would not um, drill the mastoidectomy um, deeper or more caudally um, than here. Yeah, but so um, from the setting here, we use uh, facial monitoring in all of our um, ear surgery cases. I mean, not in every stapes or middle ear surgery, but all the mastoid surgery, we use um, facial monitoring, especially in children, but we use it in all grown-ups as well. Do you use the facial monitor if you're operating under local? A cochlear implant Excuse under me? local? If you were doing cochlear implant under local anesthesia, would you use facial monitoring? Oh, no, of course not. Of course not. Great. No. Okay. But then we have some bio monitoring, so the patient would probably uh, complain if, it, uh, if his uh, facial muscles start to move. We started, um, it's quite nicely to, st uh, we started with a um, yeah, bio 
acoustic monitoring in the grown-up patients that are under local, and it works quite well with some uh, with some patients that can actually um, we report changes in the when we give them a pure tone, and then when we do the insertion, that works quite nicely, but. Uh, you need really good anesthesiologists so that the patient stays uh, stays calm but is awake enough to uh, perform these tasks. And of course, we uh, we train the patient the day before and tell them what will happen during the surgery. Bitte drei Nuller. Okay, so I have the um, sigmoid sinus, I have the tegmen to the dura, I have the um, um, horizontal semicircular canal, Spielung 20 bitte, in the depths, and now I look for the incus, the short process of the incus in the antrum. Okay, we're going to head back to uh, QPO because I think Arno is about to do another insertion, but we'll come back to you shortly, Hanover. See you in a bit. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Irmo, uh, Irmo, Okay, you're back on back on screen. Oh, thank you. Now, now this is a really a mess here. Sorry, <laughs> I I have to clean up a bit. But for the insertion, we definitely do not want to have as much bone dust everywhere. So I did the well for the implant, and here we use the ki a kind of tunnel, uh, which is. Uh, uh, which is a bridge which will be then filled with bone dust and fibrin glue. Right, that's the same. And uh, yeah, we are ready for, for putting the uh, implant in. And uh, let's see how it how it goes. The metal electrode is. Uh, uh, is very flexible and uh, sometimes it may be uh, a bit uh, yeah you sometimes you need to be patient uh, with its insertion but it's really uh, atraumatic and uh, you can get some really nice hearing preservation results and uh, as Niels told you uh just in in his speech we also do the do the mon monitoring of of the hearing uh in for patients uh with residual hearing and it actually works better than ecoc so when we present the patient uh an alternate sound or a pure sound and uh he has to tell us whether or not the sound is is uh, changing uh, with respect to to volume, this is definitely the only only way what the patient can appreciate if you stimulate with uh, with a pure tone. Uh, these were very successful, and also in in uh, in those cases where the patient can perceive the sound, but uh, we do not get any echo responses. Uh, so-called borderline, borderline uh, cases, 
these are this is quite successful in with us that, that respect so I will change to the exoscope again I will zoom out a bit. And again, I have to change classes. Olisiko vähän puhdasta kosteita? Let's see how that Yes. Yep. Hula. All right. So let's have a look. So this is a flex twenty six uh, length, and uh, we we are looking for an atsa imun a valkonen. We are looking for insertion depth of of one and a half turns. Pitää vähän valoa täältä salista vähentää. Okay, now I have a better picture. Okay. So I will zoom in again. And we have to get. Nyt pitää potilaalle sanoa, että, että nyt ei saa liikkua. So and we advise the patient that uh, he shouldn't be moving at this stage. Okay, then we have to wait that he can adjust his head for. I have to come a bit from the other angle. I have to focus on the round window. And let's have a look. I need a, perhaps a bit more light. Okay. Do you see the round window now? Or is it still obscure? Are you still there? We are still here. Yeah, we're still with you. Okay. Oh, okay, and you see the round window now? We can see the round window really nicely. Okay, good. So, then I will uh, make the incision. And this is usually done with a needle. And here you see the round window is uh, the angle is from us away, so uh, we have to come perhaps from from this angle. But now I will insert in, inside the round window membrane, and again I will I will raise raise the a flap with a hook. It helps to get me the electrode in. Okay, and then I come, let's go from this perspective. Now you see it a bit better. Let's zoom in a bit. Now you should have a good view. Okay, and then I will again put some dexamethasone onto the uh, electrode array. Hmm. 
and then I'm looking for the for the green dot on the on the electrode and this is because uh, the metal electrode has also uh, half bond electrodes at the I, I guess it's the, the first distal electrodes and as you see it's really floppy and I like to have the electrode as straight as possible but this has a bit a curve in it which is not so preferable but as I said that this is this might be not the the most easiest electrode to insert but it's I guess again worth a while and definitely we all need challenges otherwise work would be boring so let's have a look whether or not this wants to go in still it wants to curl too much. I will zoom out a bit. Makes my life a bit more easier. You see we have a quite uh, extensive curl here which is not not uh, preferable now. I try to make it a bit more straight. Uh, the metal electrodes are quite robust. You can you can also uh, sometimes they stand some misuse even. So let's see whether this works out. Again, it's it would make life much more easier if the electrode would be straight but for reason or another I can can get it not straight right now I will use some dexamethasone again to okay I usually try to uh, grasp it much distally in order not to harm the electrode plates but this is this will be a bit of a challenge but we have to in that case I will use uh, the suction And sometimes it helps to guide the electrode into the cochlea. You have to be careful not to uh, uh, be too near the round window, not to uh, get the perilymph out of the cochlea. So I guess this one will give will give me a bit of challenge today. But let's have a look whether this will work out. Okay. It's really like inserting a well-cooked noodle into the cochlea. Yeah, that's but, the, that's uh, the, be the benefit and the drawback of the of the, fle the very flexible ones. Yeah. They're lovely and soft, but they can be a challenge if they get even a slightly curve on them. But it looks like it's going in yeah, nicely now. Was, yeah, but this was the, the trick to use the suction because it nice. will stick a bit to the suction and then you can 
you can guide it. Send it in the right direction. Yeah, this is this is the way. So uh, actually, I'm happy that I could demonstrate this one because otherwise it would be again boring. Yeah, uh, if, it, for if it looks everyone. too easy, yeah, if it looks too easy, it's not yeah, quite so exciting. Right. <laughs> That's true. So. Okay, brilliant. So I need another forceps now. But okay. as, you, as you see, it, it yep. goes very nicely in, and yeah. and we get a full insertion. It's beautiful. And okay. then we will yeah. fix it with bone bone pate and and uh, fibrin glue actually. Fantastic. Even though we see here the facial nerve, which is still in the in his uh, in the bony canal, uh, I'm I'm not very comfortable with doing the slit here. This is uh, yeah. therefore I. I prefer to fix it at two points with bone pate with bone and uh, piping glue. Fantastic. We're going to let you get on with that because Hanover have just made a slit, which is a good time to come and see it. So we'll catch up with you in a bit. Thank thanks, Arno. Okay. Oh, oh you put India on. Like it. Nova. Hello. Okay, Hanover, you're back online. Yes, hello. Welcome so, back. Um, yeah, I'll show you how I went on here. Can you my name? So, um, for the further landmarks, I found the uh, short process of the Incas here. The middle ear looks nice, it's quite aerated. My nadel bitte. So I have the short process of the ink is here. I have the horizontal semicircular canal. And then I uh, found the facial nerve. Uh, I'll show you here. Um, Mona. Ich kann das, uh, die Fokusposition ist aktuell fixiert. Wie mache ich das weg? I have a small problem with the microscope right now okay. because we'll I cannot change the focus. That's all right. We're going to head back over to India because I okay. think Mohan's just finishing up and we'll come back to you shortly. See, see you in a bit. Yeah, okay, no problem. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Jetzt geht's. Hello, Mohan. We're with you. No, no sound jets. No. So uh, we saw some lovely surgery from India today, and um, the surgeon will give us his, uh, I think his last comments before he goes out for dinner, because I think it's uh, quite an hour John, difference. Uh, can you hear me, Emma? Yeah, we can yeah, hear you now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, okay, uh, just wanted to uh, you know, uh, thank you all for, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, you know, it's been a, a wonderful day. Uh, I've really enjoyed watching all the surgeries. Uh, and uh, you know it's been a real learning experience. I'm sure everyone who's watching today has benefited tremendously. Uh, and uh, on behalf of our entire team here from Chennai, a big thanks to you all. Uh, you know, have have a wonderful day and, uh, and uh, all the best to every one of you. Thank you. That's great. Well, at least we haven't had to operate in 34 degrees. Hopefully, it's cooling down for you now, and you'll have a, a nice evening meal. Have you got that planned? Well, anyway, Mohan, thank you very much. I was uh, very happy with your technical team as well. Uh, it all went well. And uh, the viewers don't realize, because I, I mean, it must be a, a distance between us of one way, at least 4,000 kilometers. And I mean, it's going up and down directional. And we saw the surgery clear and well. So I really want to thank you and your, to share your experience with us. Uh, and I think we all are very happy with your contribution. Thank you, so much. Thank you. Can you, you can you turn the camera to the team and we'll just give them a wave? <laughs> Is yeah. there a there? there? Okay. So there you are. Uh, you know, that's the technical team. And then uh, you have Raghu. Raghu there. Look in the camera. Uh, and Raghu is the camera. 
Jatin is our uh, fellow, uh, so that's the team which went. And uh, how the nurses? Yes, nurse thank you. Is, Namaste. Me. Uh, very good. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Nice all. evening. Yes. Enjoy your day. Bye bye. Bye. As far as I know. Hello. Hello, we're back in Hanover. Ah, okay, yes. So I fixed the problem with the microscope. That's awesome. And now I went for the... Uh, I hope you can see everything. Um, as I saw from the CT scans... Uh, nee, bitte, schippchen groß. Um, there was a quite a big bony overhang. And she also had a um, false membrane that for one second I thought I might have already opened the round window, but this is still the niche. The membrane is further down there. And uh, I hope that you can see it. That's here, there where she had something like yeah. a half moon mucosal fault, yeah. which uh, on the first view appeared as a uh, round window membrane, but it wasn't. So the real membrane is down there and it's still intact. And um, for that implant, for the 622, I think I already um, uh, yeah, freed it enough. I use a 1.5 millimeter burr um, to remove the bony overhang. And usually we drill with um, 60,000 uh, turns per minute. But for the drilling on the um, overhang, we use only 3,000 rounds per minute. Okay, but now I can I turn the light up a little. And I think that you... Wait, wait, wait for it. Now should see the membrane quite nicely, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I had put some uh, steroid gel foam on it which I'm still waiting for, so... <laughs> um, Nadel, bitte. Frau Hernandez, ich... Um, so here is the facial going in that direction, and in front here I found the quarter, and between facial and quarter uh, we do this um, slit to uh, hold the electrode later on. We always do that in lateral wall electrodes to prevent um, slipping out of the electrode or any dislocations. So for the Koch, um, 05er Bohrer nochmal bitte. For the um, Nucleus 622, the slit has to be drilled with a 0.5 millimeter diamond burr. Um, it changes a little with the thickness of the electrode there. Um, for the mid-L devices, we uh, take a one millimeter burr, and for the uh, Slim J, and for the yeah, uh, for the Oticon um, Evo, we use a 0.5 millimeter burr and widen it so that a 0.7 millimeter um, suction can be placed in there because the electrodes are a little bit bigger, but the Nucleus 602 is very slim, so this, five, this 0.5 millimeter slit here is enough to hold the electrode later on. So I'm still waiting for that um, steroid gel foam, which I put now on the round window. How much that? Super. Dexameter zone? Prima. Genau, genau. So afterwards, I still have to drill the bone bed, and um, during that time, the dexamethasone can uh, diffuse a little through the round window in the cochlea. We also use um, systemic steroids, the anesthesiologist's favorite, because um, it prevents post-operative nausea and vomiting. And for us, it's part of the therapy regimen for the soft surgery technique, which also includes these uh, systemic steroids here in our department.
Okay. So when you drill that slit, I mean, of course, it's uh, quite handy because um, the electrodes uh, do not change their positions afterwards till the end of life, probably. But um, before you do so, you have to know quite exactly where the corda and the facial is. And you have to drill that slit pretty... Yeah, that's right. Jetzt nochmal mit den großen Plaster und ein Vierer. Um, scharfen Rosenspielung, Spielung 30, bitte. And you have to drill that slit with a lot of irrigation and you have to take your time because you really have to prevent um, you really have to prevent heat and swelling of corda or facial nerve in that area. So now that I've found all the important structures, I continue with the mastoidectomy a little. I mean, it's a healthy mastoid, so I will not exaggerate it, but um, you know, it's still a child and she can get otitis media or whatever. And if it's ever necessary in that patient to do a, a revision surgery or mastoidectomy, or revision mastoidectomy, um, then um, you are quite happy when all the, or most of the uh, aerated cells are drilled away and um, you see a clear picture of all the important landmarks. But I will not go in the absolute depths of the mastoid tips. It's just not necessary here. But um, as you see at the mastoid tip, above the uh, sigmoid sinus, and we go superiorly here, at the top above the dura, we, we leave a bony overhang everywhere uh, so that the cable will never be in contact with the fish flap. Um, that's just safer for the cable. And it is well protected against trauma or, or anything that the patient does with his ear. Okay, so far we are done with the mastoidectomy. And while I drill the bony bed, my colleagues test the implant so we can open the nucleus 622, please, and test it in water, see if all the impedances are correct and if the implant that we are going to insert is working as far as we can test it before. Macro yet? Um, ja, bitte erstmal ein Messer. Kompressor einmal. Ähm, können wir noch ein bisschen weiter ranzoomen mit der Makrokamera? Okay, we're going to head back to Finland I'm for sorry. some closing. Oh no, can you hear me? Okay, so we're going to head back to Finland for some closing words from from Arno. So we'll be back with you in a minute, Hannover. His, his famous last. Yeah, word. okay, okay, perfect. <lacht> See you in a bit. Hello, <coughs> Arno. We're waiting yeah. for your famous last words for today. <lacht> Oh, famous last words. <laughs> this is quite a path. <laughs> so we have seen uh, quite interesting surgery, I guess. I had the opportunity to um, see the see other uh, surgeries yesterday, today. I haven't the chance, but uh, I will do it. So again, I w want to thank everybody and all, also my team here. Perhaps uh, Yari can, can show show around. We have a very competent team really and uh, they are really devoted to this one and uh, and also many thanks to you Wilco that you from year to year you are motivated to to uh, arrange. It's a lot of work and uh, that's really appreciated but I really think that uh, the concept of lion web is uh, important in order to have access to to uh, education and also the COVID crisis has shown that that uh, this concept was years years ahead of time and uh, and also I'm happy that uh, 
we had new institutions to join and uh, great that Emma was part of the moderation team. So thank you every, everyone in Utrecht and uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you, uh, you Arno. Uh, well, it, it's an absolute honor to have you participate. Um, well, it's for, for a couple of years now, and every time you bring something new to the table, that's not a challenge. It's not meaning that you need to bring something new next time. We very much appreciate, uh, or let me talk personally, I am very impressed with your, um, your broad palette of surgical skill, fearlessness, and, and technical team as well. And of course, uh, uh, the one thing I know for certain, like we talked to a couple of days ago when I called you in the weekend to make sure that the connection would work, et cetera, et cetera. To tell you honestly, I know it will always work from Finland because the motivation is there and your technical team is, uh, is up to level. So it's always very pleasant to have you along because we know uh, together with some uh, two German sites, we always have the backbone of the whole line, whatever may happen with the other sites, you are always there to perform and you do. So my gratitude to you is very big, honestly, and I very much appreciate the things that you do. And it interests me a lot, actually, because, you know, I've been struggling with foldovers for some years ago and I've done other yeah. things like that. So, you know, it's, it's really I'm, I'm impressed to see how you in the, have implemented all your techniques. So I think our thank, but also the viewers and also the patients are is very high, big gratitude to your uh, fearless uh, performance every time. <laughs> it's really true. So thank, thank you, you, Arno. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the kind words. Yes, uh, well, actually, we really want to bring in something new. And uh, and as John said yesterday, this is life surgery, and uh, everyone can do good, good uh, edited videos of of something. But but I think uh, the benefit is that we also bring in diff uh, difficult cases, just to show. Uh, that you know we are facing with the same challenges and and also very experienced surgeons uh, have to do some you know after thinking and uh, and and try to try to solve problems and we have different uh, possibilities and also different ways of solving problems and and I think this is the benefit of of having life surgery uh, which, which cannot be uh, conveyed through uh, conferences or or edited videos or, or, or things like that. This is real life. This is this is the setting we are in, and 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 therefore I I really appreciate your effort because it's it's re technically this is uh, this is quite heavy stuff what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks very much, Arno. I have to put up with him. <laughs> so well, we look forward to seeing you in the future, and we uh, we hope the vote that went yesterday is uh, going to introduce you into even closer contact. But we we better stay off the politics at the moment. Well, okay. We may get targeted here well, in Utrecht. The only thing we need to say let, let, let's hope that the future will be brighter than where we're at now, because that's uh, it's sad yeah. for for everybody in the world, and yeah. it's incomprehensible. But things are the way they are. Okay. And uh, yeah. by the way. Very happy to have you with us, and we'll see you next year. Sure, bye-bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. I think we, no, we might get a bomb so from Bezier. Yeah. Hello, Niels. We're back with you. So you, don't say anything we don't are not supposed to hear because we'll translate it into English. Um, excuse me, the the burr was so loud. Can you say it again? We're back with you. We're back to, to with you, and I said don't say anything in German because we'll probably translate that into English. Okay. <laughs> so um, I drill the bony bed now, and as I said before, the bone of that patient, the cortical bone, is quite thin. Um, so I, drill to to really push the um, anterior part of the implant in a plain way, I have to drill up to the dura and do something like a bony island 
to push in the implant a little so that it, li it lies in there nicely flat. And, uh, but this of course takes some time because I, I mustn't uh, injure the dura of course. Gesundheit. Um, what I'm using right now, which I find very handy for that part of the surgery, is a so-called uh, sharp diamond burr. It's of uh, 5.0 millimeters, and I can remove bone with it, but still, when I touch the dura, um, it will not uh, get injured as easy as with a cutting burr. So we drill that bony bed so deep um, for two reasons. The first reason is that, um, of course, it's uh, a, a little more um, comfortable for the patient um, when the implant uh, is in is is, is a plan on the head. And on the other side, um, the bed prevents the implant body from moving because we don't use any sutures or anything like that. Um, but when you drill a very precise bony bed, then the implant cannot move in any direction. Freya, bitte. So um, now you see here the anterior part of the of the bony bed, and you see how I can. Um, um, I hope that you can see it. How I can push in the dura. I don't need it to do that the whole way around in that patient's because the bone was thick enough uh, on the more um, uh, caudal part. Jetzt mal bitte um, den Bohrer nochmal. Now I drill the connection between the bony bed and the mastoid cavity. Lester, bitte. Ja, and then we're almost done. Nee. We always um, drill the tunnel towards the sinus dural angle. And from there we have it 45 degree angle of the implant body so that we have quite a standardized position of the coils. Okay, you see here um, the, uh, the suction uh, is in the tunnel um, but there's still bone left on it because we don't want um, the implant to like get in front or move more laterally. Dummy. You see now the dummy is in place and it's pushed here under that bridge and you cannot move it at all. It's, it's flat. It's flat and plain with the surrounding bone and it's uh, not able to move upwards or downwards. Can you see that? Or should I show it with a microscope again? We can see it very nicely. Okay. Um, before I put in the implant, um, I always... Spülung, um, bitte. I always use um, irrigation and I dry the bony bed 
because it can happen that you have some damages of the Dura and uh, CSF leakage that you don't realize in the first place because you think you think it's fluid from the from the irrigation. So now everything should be dry, and I see the Dura, but I see no more fluids. So I'm I'm fine here, or the patient is fine. Okay, now my Bora. Nö. Okay. Jetzt das Implantat hier drauf. Bitte. Ach so, ich das schon getestet. Jo. So now the scrub nurse Leo, she is um, putting the, um, the speech processor in a sterile drape and uh, we test the implant again. When we started with the 622 or the, the uh, 422 or 522 in the beginning, um, we had some extrusions of the electrode and then electrodes, and then we started to um, drill that slit that I just showed you. But the disadvantage of the um, electrode is that it has this wing which does not fit nicely into the slit. So what you will see next is a <laughs> is a little modification of the electrode because we cut away that um, silicone wing so that the electrode cable can be better pushed and tightened up in the slit. Hmm. So all the impedances are all right. We tested in uh, saline. Oh no, that's Ringer solution, right? In, in Ringer solution. No, 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 no. Bitte jetzt mal um, ein Brettchen hier. Das kann bitte weg. Ich brauche einen Kontrast. Danke, Leo. Und das Mikroskop. Okay, what you see in the microscope is the testing of the impedances. Was macht das, Ari? Ich weiß nicht, ob es immer autofokussiert oder so, aber... Okay, ähm, Nadel mal bitte. Um, so this is the electrode in total. It's the 22 contacts and then you have the two white markers. The first marker here is 20 millimeters and the second marker here is 25 millimeters. And as I told you before, in this case, we plan to do an insertion of a 25 millimeters because there's no residual hearing uh, and a normal length of the cochlea. And jetzt mal bitte Messer, neues, kleines. And that's what I said, what we cut away is this small silicone ring here. Of course, it's always a little tricky not uh, to damage the uh, electrode itself but we did that many hundred times and nobody ever cut into the electrode. Here, my bitte name. So it's just a little silicone that is removed here. Hopefully today is not a good time for the first time. No, doesn't look like it. Okay, so the electrode is not damaged and the wing here is removed. And this will be the area where the, um, where the cable is pushed into that slit. 
Okay, and the nice thing from uh, the company Cochlea is that they have this uh, silicone sheet sh here that protects the electrode when we lead it through our tunnel. Some other manufacturers, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, do not offer such a soft protection shield. Einmal Makrokamera von oben, bitte. Okay. And Sauger, bitte. As you've seen before, I used irrigation before. That's quite important because we don't want to have any bone dust um, here in that area because that can lead uh, to secondary ossification spots and uh, to, to pain probably for the patients. So we are always quite eager to do a proper irrigation before in the implant pocket. Jetzt mal bitte vier Zinker. Einmal halten. Peeling, peeling. So what I'm doing now is that I uh, lead the electrode through that tunnel, pushing from behind and pulling it out in the mastoid cavity, as you see like that, without touching the electrode contacts. And as you're probably all familiar with, the company Cochlea has a second electrode, a neutral electrode, which I will later on push underneath the uh, temporal muscle. Okay, now I push the implant here from the back in the bed. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see it under the microscope. Again, it's plan with the surrounding bone. Raspaplester erstmal bitte. Now I go with the raspatorium underneath the temporal muscle, upwards and a little in front. And here is that neutral electrode. Fortunate, fortunately, it does not have this ball at the end anymore, which makes it quite hard to remove in revision cases. Um, so I pull this underneath the temporal muscle and hopes that it's, hope that it stays there. Otherwise, it would annoy me during the insertion. Jetzt mal bitte den Vierzinker rausnehmen. Haben wir Perilymphe da, bitte? 3-3. Sauger. Ne, gib mal den erstmal, dann kann ich einmal aussaugen. Einmal Spülung, bitte. So now I do the irrigation of the mastoid cavity. And then we go for the insertion. Ja. Noch nicht, erstmal muss ich ja dahin, ne? Achso. Ich glaube, das Deckenlicht kann jetzt weg, nicht, dass ich mich hier aufhänge. Können wir bitte während der Insertion noch dieses Ding da oben ausblenden? Sauger bitte, jetzt großen, ja perfekt. So what, uh, before I do the insertion, we um, perform a perilymph sample. We can do mass spectroscopy to look for proteins in the, in the perilymph. And by that, we hope that in future, we can uh, look for certain proteins that are more or less expressed in certain, certain uh, 
inner ear diseases. Jetzt Perilymphe, bitte. And we also try to match it with the performance um, of the patient later on. So that's a small glass tube with a tip. And now I'm into the round window. And um, now for 20 seconds, we'll gather some perilymph um, by capillary forces. Okay, now the perilymph is removed. And as you see, uh, I don't know, I hope that you can see there's already a very small opening of the round window membrane. Oh, uh, Manfred, here is this autofocus. Can we it irgendwie ausstellen? It makes me verrückt. Kleineren Sauger, bitte. Um, the, um, the incision, there's a small dot, uh, it's ha probably hard for you to see on the screen, but there's a small incision already, which is not enough uh, for the electrode to be inserted, so I take our so-called cochlear knife, it's just a cannula, man nehmen bitte a bent cannula that I use to incise the round window membrane. So by now it's very important not to directly drill on the round window anymore, but you can still drill very gently, uh, sorry, use the suction very gently in the hypertympanon. So now you see that there's a half moon shaped um, there's a half moon shaped incision of the um, round window membrane. Nehmen wir nah, um, noch mal bitte die, die gebogene Nadel. Ja. I will enlarge in that a tiny bit. So you have it somewhat crosswise. Okay, that should be enough. I try not to open it too much. Sauger bitte. Okay. Now I start the insertion. Okay, I have a little problem with the bending of the electrode. So um, what I can do, I push the implant body back a little bit so that I have less tension on the electrode and then I see better because I have less tension on the electrode cable. Niels, I'm just going to talk over you for a second to Bézier. Um, Bézier, uh, you're the final performers of the day, Thibaut. We'll come to you in about five minutes uh, after Niels has finished his insertion and in Hanover. And ads. Can you just put your thumbs up, Thibaut, if you can hear me? Well, that's good. Right, that's promising. Okay, we'll go back to Hanover.
Tebow, we can see you. Just can you give a thumbs up if you're if you're nearly ready? Tebow Dumont, can you hear us? Okay, what? Uh, Hanover is now in certain. Okay. okay. So even though this patient does not have residual hearing or a lot, I try to insert as slow as I can with my hands because you never know that patient is eight year old. Of course, we don't want to harm any structures for possible future therapies. Healing. Now I change to forceps. And take some time. Still quite a long way to go. But by that I can do it as as slow as possible. So as you see, the first marker is already now at the round window niche. So that's where I would stop in the case of residual hearing or EAS patients. But in this patient, you see I go five millimeters deeper as slow as I can. I hope I don't bore you. So another two millimeters. Sorry, Bézier, that I take so much time. No, no need to apologize and we're not bored. You, you're doing they great. Yet. They've not quite started. Uh, we're okay. enjoying your nice steady insertion. So all good. Okay, so now here we go. Here you see the white marker is at the round window. And now I can gently push the electrode cable into the slit. Okay, Sauger. Okay, that's all. Um, now I will arrange the cable in the mastoid cavity and I will just put, you know, I, I've only did a small cut in the round window membrane, so I will not use fascia or muscle or anything that could cause um, extensive scarring. So we just put some fresh venous blood on the round window area that's uh, enough for sealing. Fantastic, thank you so, so much. So that's basically... Okay, thank you for keeping up with me. Thank you, Niels. Thank you, Niels. It's great. Not leicht geschwungen, bitte. Otoplan is a revolutionary tablet-based otological planning software. Quickly and easily import DICOM files from PACs or USB drives. Intuitive controls makes it easy to master Otoplan's advanced features. Otoplan's guided workflow simplifies 3D modeling and surgical planning. Easily create 3D reconstructions of otological structures, 
including facial nerve, corda tympani, and more. Otoplan lets you see exactly where you are going before you make the first cut. Otoplan makes it easy to achieve an ideal view of the cochlea and make consistent measurements. Choose the ideal electrode array for each patient for best hearing outcomes. The electrode visualization tool uses patient-specific data to show insertion depth and covered frequency of each electrode contact. Otoplan makes it easy to discuss the ideal electrode choice and surgical considerations with your patients. One-step export feature automatically generates a full case report in PDF or PowerPoint format. Otoplan's post-op analysis feature makes it simple to perform a quality check and verify insertion status from post-operative images. Okay, Thibault, we're with you. Good afternoon. Bon après-midi. Nous sommes avec vous. Oui, oui, mais c'est prévu à 13h15, donc... Thibault Et... Dumont, can you hear us in Bézier? Yes, yes, yes. Good. You are the last man oui. standing. Ok. Alors, Michel, tu vois, il faut, faut qu'on voit dans le trou. Je être plus derrière mon oreille gauche. Those that are still watching, we're having some problems with the video feed from the cost clinic, which keeps freezing. It's been doing it for the last few hours. Hopefully, we'll be able to maintain an image. Regarde de l'autre côté, fais voir. Regarde, là. Il faudrait que tu descendes un peu plus vers les pieds. Dans le, le pied de la caméra pour être plus dans l'axe. Thibaut, um, we, we can yes. your, your image keeps freezing and unfreezing, so do you want to just very quickly present the case and then we'll do we'll do the best we can to stay connected. Yes, uh, the, this patient has a 50 decibel mixed hearing loss with 30 decibel gap. C'est trop zoomé. Il uh, he was he was operated on four times. Uh, tympanoplasty with osiculoplasty. Currently, there, he has a, a total prosthesis which, with a subluxation of the stapes foot plate. And because of that, we decided to not perform a new osiculoplasty, but uh, a bone anchor hearing aid. So I will implant him a ponto. Uh, bone anchor hearing aid with a percutaneous abutment with a mono surgical techniques that mean it is a one shot drilling. And so I will show you. Okay, and he has no vertigo with his uh, subluxation? No, no, okay, no. Okay, good. So you just leave it ah. alone, yeah, good. Alors, il faut lui montrer un peu plus vers les pieds. Un peu plus vers les pieds, Michel. Alors, vous allez leur donner le mal de mer si ça bouge tout le temps comme ça. Alors, plus bas. Et, mais recule-toi et, et un peu plus vers les pieds. Et il faut dézoomer. So, sorry, uh, we are... 
non, mais enfin bon, c'est... C'est trop zoomé. Uh, usually, I put the implant 45 degrees posterior and superior to the auditory canal. In that case, this patient, peux-tu dézoomer, is uh, riding bicycle, and because of that, uh, he wears a helmet, and so I will insert the implant more inferior in order to allow him to use uh, the ponto or the baja with a helmet. Bon, on va le mettre comme ça. OK. So first step, uh, I will measure the thickness of the soft tissue at the site of the implant. Si je vous mettez pas devant l'écran, s'il vous plaît. Hop. Porte aiguille. Il faudrait ouvrir le diaphragme un peu plus. And in that case, hop, the thickness of the soft tissue is 4.5 mm. And so I will use a 6 mm abutment. 9 mm would be too long. And so I will use a 4 mm implant with a 6 mm abutment. So now I can make the infiltration with xylocaine and epinephrine to decrease the bleeding. And so I will remove the skin and the soft tissue with a 5 mm punch. I cut the skin and the soft tissue down to the periosteum. And I will remove all. Compress the soup. Voilà. Alors. Où est la pédale d'aspi Excuse me. And I will perform hémostasis with monopolar cautery. Euh, oui. Feu. Je pourrais monter un peu le sialytique, s'il vous plaît. Feu. Now, c'est pas au point, Michel. C'est pas au point. I will perform the incision of the, oui, donnez-moi, this way, of the periosteum. And deflect the periosteum. in a larger diameter than the diameter to, of the implant. And I can see the bone in the depths. I think you may see it. Hop. Là, donc, on voit l'os. Pourquoi l'image est sombre comme ça C'est dommage. Oui. And then I will put in place the cannula, the drilling cannula, to protect the soft tissue during drilling. Vous pouvez le donner tout de suite. Ouais, tu peux me le passer. Je vérifie que there is no soft, no soft tissue in the depths. I can see through the cannula. And then all will be performed through the cannula. La fraise. With a mono drill. It's a, a para parabolic drill, and uh, it will create a 4.75 mm deep hole with a 4 mm uh, diameter. Vous avez rempli, vous êtes prête. Allez, on y va. Hop, voilà. 
stop. And that's down, and the nerves will prepare. Hop, they lave encore. Voilà. Lave bien. The implants, and during that time, I check that there is still bone in the depth. Okay. Allez. Alors. And I convert the speed of the... Alors, vous venez là, s'il vous plaît. Vous appuyez sur 50 pour monter le coupe. Vous montez à 70. Et vous validez. OK. Voilà. The nurse is preparing... Un peu plus vers les pieds, Michel. Un peu plus vers les pieds. L'image un peu plus vers la droite. Pour centrer le voilà parfait so when the implant will be re ready I will remove the cannula and check that there is no periosteum on the hole in the depths Okay, here is the implant. It is a BHX Ponto implant. So, alors, vous tenez ça. I remove the cannula and I can see very clearly that the, the hole, you can see it in the picture. Everything is okay. And so I will insert the implant. Hugo, it's very clear. Thank you very much. It's very clear. Uh, we could see the drilled hole as well. Thank you. Okay, allez-y. De l'eau. Uh, and I, I count the turns of insertion. Two, three, four, and five, near five turns of insertion. And Please check manually. And that's okay. You can find that at this stage, the skin seems to be very close to the surface of the implant. It is because of the infiltration. And with, uh, when the post-op edema will disappear, then the length of the implant will be good. It's rather, it's better to have an implant rather a little bit too short than too long. That's very neat, uh, very neat, Tebow. It looks beautiful. Up. Come on, I'll try to turn it. Voilà. And that's okay. The the silicone. Uh, it's perfect. Is... I'm sad to say it's the best image we've had. <laughs> off from you for the last two days. Really good image, yeah. And very nice demonstration. Okay, the silicone disc will be let one week and after uh, the implant will be let uh, without any dressing. And when will, you, okay. when, will you, when, will you, when will you put the processor on? Uh, in one month. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. And... Uh, Send our love to everybody in Bézier. We'll be seeing them in four weeks' time, I hope. Yes. Uh, okay. For the first time in two years. Three years. Uh, three years. Yes, it will, it will be good. Yeah, we're going to miss my birthday this year. It's normally on the 28th, so it's the first time in 20 years that I haven't had my birthday in Bézier. So but it's we'll still have to on the some other celebration. <laughs> but John, it's still on the 28th. Is it on the 28th? It's your birthday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not changing my birthday. No, 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 okay. I can't do that. Well, anyway, Thibaut, <laughs> thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And this wraps bye bye. around uh, about up for uh, the transmission. Uh, and since it's uh, almost John's birthday, I'll uh, I'll give, let him to, uh, no. Let let's say let Emma do the the famous last words of the transmission of the second day of the lion on the Wednesday. And there's news from Britain as well. Okay, Emma.
So thanks everyone for um, watching today. It's been a fantastic day. We've had some really beautiful surgeries from India, Finland, Germany and France. I've thoroughly enjoyed them and learned a few things. And so I'm going to ask John to say a few words and then Wilco to finish up. Right, well I'm particularly grateful to Wilco as ever. He's been working in the background here for over a week setting up the studio. And... Uh, a lot of you just won't oui, understand oui. what hard work that is. Uh, Bézier, can you cut your sound, oui. please? Le, je, le jeudi. Voilà, le, le jeudi, j'en ferai. Uh, a lot of people won't understand how, how difficult and time-consuming that is. Um, you know, the technical team here have worked extremely hard, um, supported by the manufacturers whose videos you've seen. We're really grateful this year that we've got two new moderators on board, which has completely altered the... No, no, no. Sexual ratio, I think oh, I can say that very, without offending and, anybody. And the, and the average age. And the average age. Yeah. We're, we're, we're down to just a bit over 40 now from 60-odd. Uh, and, uh, you know, some new blood on the team has been very welcome. Uh, so Nina's back in the UK working today. Of course, you're talking uh, about her, I suppose. Yeah, and uh, as you know, she was my trainee. I'm very proud of her. And, Nina, uh, you mean? Emma, Emma uh, wasn't my trainee, but worked with several of my colleagues very highly thought of so hopefully they'll remain on the team in the future i think with any more further ado we'd like to thank everybody for watching everything will, ava will be available um on the lion site in due course and it's still on it's already uh, in the whole in uh, integral part yeah. on the recording on the website and we hope to see you again um next year and uh, possibly a live transmission from uh, bezier there, uh, there will at be. the end of june there will be yeah. goodbye Thank you very much, and we absolutely do need to emphasize that we are grateful that all our patients were uh, available and willing to participate in this uh, educational event, global educational ev event, and uh, and of course all the surgeons and the technical teams that were involved uh, today. It, uh, it's been a marvelous day for us from the studio, and uh, I think most of the time the quality was fantastic, and all of the time the surgery, uh, surgery was uh, fantastic. Uh, we thank our uh, sponsors and we hope to see you soon. That's uh, all. Thank you. Bye bye. Los pasos más sencillos que tiene el modelo actual con respecto al anterior es número uno que es menos profundo menos menos eh, entra menos dentro de la cavidad craneal con lo cual eh, hay que fresar menos y en segundo lugar que es algo por lo que llevo luchando desde hace siete años que tiene tornillos autorroscantes y autoperforantes tornillos que se ponen en segundos en, en 10 15 segundos está puesto cada tornillo so we did now the first surgery and the first surgery uh, time was about 50 minutes from the incision to the skin to the closure to the skin and this reflects I think the easiness of the surgery itself and also the safety of the surgery so you don't have to deal with dura you don't have to do with sigmoid sinus to my knowledge this implant at the moment is the best implant on the world right after a surgery now the first impressions are great um, it's it's uh, fantastic to see uh, how uh, the company uh, uses the hints and, and the feedback of the surgeons to improve the implant and so this is uh, like a, a symbiotic activity between uh, the developer and the ENT surgeon and uh, that's fantastic. We will certainly have many patients with this, because it is easy to implant it, because there are more patients that come in this direction, who come for this implant, and that's why we are also very happy, also in the sense of our patients, that we have a bigger offer, or a bigger indication. I just finished the first implantation of the new Bonebridge 602, and I'm really excited. Uh, all the work we put in the new design all together um, makes a great benefit and a great step ahead for that implant and uh, I'm looking really forward to tomorrow, uh, three more implantations and I'm really happy and uh, really excited about it. Since Graham's encounter with a seashell on a blade of grass in the 1970s, and the inspiring discovery that brought the first multi-channel cochlear implant, the cochlear story has evolved from an ambitious endeavour to a life-changing partner on the journey back to hearing.
Our people are driven by this same dedication today and have helped transform hundreds of thousands of lives. This shared drive to do life-changing work is inspired and influenced strongly by our beginnings while being motivated by the energy of our people today and everyone we partner with and always guided by a clear, simple truth that our position to connect people to a life lived with hearing is nothing short of a privilege. So we'll keep listening and responding to bring implantable hearing within the reach of those who need it.